Okay, folks, here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, it is November 30th, and it is time for the Ron DeSantis-Gavin Newsom debate. Is this really going to be anything all that interesting? I have no idea, but we are going to be reacting to that tonight live as it begins at 9 p.m., assuming that Fox News does not copyright us because... They have had a track record of doing that to a lot of creators because apparently uh, political debates are, are not fair use. And, you know, even a lot of liberal networks don't do that. But Fox News does because they're greedy uh, people, I'll say. But uh, yeah, with that said, let's get into this. Newsom DeSantis, almost time. <laughs> And we are live tonight from the great state of Florida. Welcome everyone to the Vince Dow show. It is, I'm losing track of the days because I've been trying to like study and cram for finals and also keep up with all the content. It is Thursday, November 30th, the year of our Lord, 2023. And I am your host, Vince Dow. Folks, I think most of you are familiar with the fact that this was going to happen. Now, it, uh, the general sentiment I'm getting is a lot of people seem to have forgotten that it's actually supposed to happen. But if you've forgotten, here you are. You came to the right stream. Tonight is the Gavin Newsom, Ron DeSantis debate on Sean Hannity's show on Fox News. And, you know, I said at the time that this was announced, because I think this was announced a couple months ago, that as exciting as this sounds... I thought it was going to be kind of underwhelming. And I think when you consider there's barely even been any buzz about this, I think that is kind of vindicated. You know, now if DeSantis's presidential campaign was a lot more hot, A, he probably wouldn't even have to do this, but also B, maybe there'd be a lot more if this was last year, right? This time last year after both of the midterm elections, then maybe there'd be a little bit more excitement. But still, regardless, we are going to be reacting to it here tonight. It should be fun and relatively interesting you know regardless so uh let's do that the debate is scheduled to begin at f at nine o'clock eastern time so that is only five minutes away so before we get into it i do want to say everyone right now be sure to leave a like on this stream and of course if you do have thoughts comments anything you want to say feel free to super chat in fact i know we already got two super chats right off the gate so let's read them here right here zach for five dollars thank you very much says just finished setting up the christmas tree and man we have way too many ornaments well you know that's funny because Hold on, I gotta log into Streamlabs here so I can get the fancy thing on the screen. But um, ever since I left, ever since I moved out, I'm in college now, I'm a single man. I have not put up a Christmas tree or even thought about putting up a Christmas tree. And I was thinking now, I was like, that's actually kind of shameful. Is, is that just me or is, is that like most young single guys who, you know, don't live with any family? Because I, I, it has not even occurred to me to consider putting up a Christmas tree. And I was just thinking this year, I don't know, maybe I'm older and, you know, the wisdom sage or whatever it is. I started to think this year, you know, I should probably get like a mini Christmas tree and put it up somewhere and at least show some degree of, uh, I guess, moral sophistication. I have no idea. But thank you for the five. And I hope that's all going well. Christopher for five says, Republicans need rebranding to win elections. Non-white Republicans are not taken seriously. Well, in fairness, Christopher, I don't think any of the GOP electorate is taken seriously by the actual people who run this country, who run this party, I should say. Uh, and that's a sad reality. I'm a black Republican and people act like I have six heads and devoid of logic. Well, again, I think that is uh, most actual conservatives. And that's how we all kind of collectively feel and it is very true thank you for the five dollars again folks if you would like to super chat tonight feel free to do so we are monitoring the live feed here of fox news and we're gonna switch over to that uh as soon as hannity comes on on the nine o'clock hour i do have three minutes here with you guys to talk about this so let me do a very rapid fire lightning mcqueen style preview and say here's how i feel about what we're gonna see tonight okay so obviously I support Donald Trump. I do not I, I do not support DeSantis in the primary. With that said, 
I think it's becoming pretty clear, even to a lot of DeSantis people, that DeSantis is highly unlikely to win this primary. So with that said, honestly, to me, that's not even a factor tonight. I, I think I am rooting for DeSantis to do well just for cultural reasons, right? I think it's important, f you know, forget the primary for a second, because as, as much as the high in tune voters think about that stuff, I think if you're thinking about the general public, maybe the people in the middle, the people who are not super political who are watching this, there's an angle to which you just want to see the conservative beat the liberal, right? You just want to see, hey, conservative states are doing better than liberal states, wake some people up, blah, blah, blah. You basically get the idea. And this is a very important chance to do so. So, you know, I hope Ron DeSantis, you know, doesn't screw it up. He's on a favorable platform. He's on Hannity, right? And so you already know the moderator's in his favor. Gavin Newsom might have some charisma points on him, but let's hope that, you know, he, let's hope that is neutralized. And all around, I'm rooting for Ron to win. So I don't want any DeSantis people, if I, you know, react to this in fairness, I don't want any of you people coming to me saying, you're against the conservative movement. How could you be rooting for Newsom? I'm not rooting for Newsom, Okay. I understand there are Trump people who are probably doing that. I am not, right? Because like I said, I think it is still important, at least culturally. This is a culturally significant moment, even if it's not super politically significant. You do want to show that, hey, in general, right, conservative policies and conservative states are just working better than liberal states. You know, that, that's just, that's still an important thing to show. So I'm rooting for DeSantis. Let's hope he takes care of business. It, you know, it should be simple enough. I, I, I don't know. Um... I don't think uh, this will be important enough to boost DeSantis's campaign. I think it's dead in the water, effectively. As for Newsom, though, okay, if he does have a good night tonight, and it's very obvious what he's trying to do, I think he's basically sort of sitting and waiting for to see if Biden, they, they decide not to run Biden or something. He's obviously doing a presidential campaign, even if he hasn't announced it, you know, if he kind of gets some gotcha moments, you might see some Democrats turning around and saying, we need this guy. So it'll be interesting to see. All right, it is nine o'clock. Um, let me tune in over here to Fox News, who I believe should be switching over to Hannity here shortly. But I do know we got one last super chat here. Arnie Hernandez for two says, are you excited for America Fest 2023? Yes, I will be there. Uh, it'll be quite fun. And uh, yes, I am. All right, with that said, let's uh, let's tune in here. I let me see. I might not go, go full screen with this, honestly, folks, because like I said, Fox News are huge copyright trolls. They have a record of not being very good about letting creators actually react to debates that are in the public interest. Um, so I might, might just keep it on the screen here. I hope that's okay with everyone. I mean, you, you can see it in a second. You'll be able to hear it. And uh, here we go, folks. All right. All right. Okay. And welcome go, to Hannity, folks. and tonight we are broadcasting live just north of Atlanta, Georgia, in Alpharetta, Georgia, where in just a moment we're going to hear from the Re Republican governor of Okay, so it's like a formal Florida, debate style. The Democratic governor of the great state of California for what is the first ever red state, blue state debate right here on the Fox the way, guys, News channel. So. Now, we will do our best to give equal time to Feel each to governor. So. We will limit answers to 60 seconds per question. We'll be a little flexible as needed. Let the debate breathe as needed, along with a 30-second time for rebuttal. Let me start by introducing both Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, California Governor Gavin Newsom. Governors, uh, thank you both for being here. Really appreciate it. Great to be here. Um, I know both of you personally. Awkward I've known smile you both by for DeSantis, a long time. I know you're very busy. On, um, I also know this. I know that both of you love your individual states. Yeah. I know you both have a deep and abiding love for our country, as I do. Um, but where we are in the country, we've never kind of been this divided in a long time. There are clear and deep and profound differences in your approach to governance. Right. And before we begin, one quick note to all of you that are watching at home. Okay, I'm now the longest running primetime cable host in the history of cable news. I'm now, and I feel blessed, in my okay. 28th year at Fox. It's kind of widely known yeah, that I am a conservative. Again. However, tonight I will be <laughs> moderating this debate. I will not be part of the debate. Our right, questions right. tonight will be coming from well-sourced, fact-centered perspectives, and you will see and hear most of tonight's questions will deal with the most fundamental issues, the ones that impact the lives of the people that make this country great, the people in Florida, the people in California, and in many ways, 
Every state in the country just loves will discuss talk. taxes, the economy, immigration, crime, guns, homelessness, education, parental rights, abortion, gas prices. In other words, the things that impact you every single day. In the end, you will get to decide which governing philosophy you believe is better. The governors will explain their governing philosophy. And again, fact-based questions. So let's get started. Everybody ready? All right. All right. We, uh, as we speak, there is a phenomenon. It is playing out across the entire country. Americans, they are leaving blue states in droves in favor of red states. You can see numbers on the screen right now from the years 2021 and 2022. These particular numbers are stark in the state that you lead. In the case of you, Governor Newsom, according to the U.S. Census, this is where the numbers come from. In 2021-2022, California's lost 750,000 residents to other states. This Governor stat DeSantis, settles the whole debate, by the way. that same two-year period, you gained 454,000 residents from what, what other more do you states. Have to say? So, Governor DeSantis, we had a coin toss. I was not part of it. I missed it. Um, but apparently, Governor Newsom, you won the coin toss. Um, He's elected and to you defer. chose to let Governor DeSantis right. have the first He's elected. We'll I said, Cody, you elected tonight. to defer. <laughs> uh, so, I begin with you. You know, for Governor Newsom, All I will right. ask, you know, what your response is on this as well. What do you, it's a simple question. How do you explain this phenomenon? What, Governor, what's going on? When I was in the Navy, I got orders to go to Naval Amphibious Base Coronado in Southern California. And I was a lifeline Floridian, but I went there and I was like, man, this is one of the most beautiful places on earth. And I think California has more natural advantages than any state in the country. You almost have to try to mess California up. And yeah, that's what Gavin Newsom has done since he's been governor. He's the first governor to ever lose True. population. They actually, at one point, ran out of U-Hauls in the state of California because so many people That's were real, leaving. Of course, he's I imposed restrictions on his own people while exempting himself from those restrictions and going to the French laundry while his people were suffering. He led the country in school closures, locking kids out of school while he had his own kids in private school in person. Now, he's very good at spinning these, these tales. He's good at, at being slick and slippery. He'll, he'll tell a blizzard of lies to be able to try to mask the failures. But the reality is they have failed because of his leftist ideology. And the choice for America is this. What Biden and Harris and Newsom want to do is take the California model and do that nationally. In Florida, we showed that conservative principles work. This country must choose freedom over failure. Governor Newsom, your reaction? Well, it's good to be with you, Sean. It's nice also to see you in a, a tie as well tonight. Good to be with you, uh, Ron. And I, I, imagine, I dressed up for the occasion, Governor. Dressed, uh, no, I'm, I'm impressed and I'm grateful. Look, uh, it's an important occasion. Uh, this is an important conversation. And, and, I, and I think it's important to the folks watching. They're probably wondering, what are we actually doing here? And, and, and I want to answer that. Trying to save DeSantis' I'm campaign. Here. I'm, I'm here uh, to tell the truth about the Biden-Harris record and also compare and contrast Ron DeSantis's record and the Republican Party's record as a point of contrast that's as different your as daylight and darkness. You want to bring us back to a pre-1960s world, America in reverse. Oh, get out uh, of here. You want to roll back hard-earned national rights on voting rights, on civil rights, on LGBTQ rights, on women's rights, not just access to abortion, but also access to contraception. You want to weaponize grievance. You are focusing on false separateness. You in particular, Ron, are on a banning binge, a cultural purge, intimidating and humiliating people you disagree with. The you distraction. and President Trump are really trying to light democracy on fire. So, Sean, there are profound differences tonight, and I look forward to engaging. What about but your there's state? there's one thing in closing that we have See, in common is neither of us will be the nominee for our party in 2024. Governor, I don't um, know about that. Great opening so statement, <laughs> but it didn't did not address, it, it right. didn't address the issue. Right. Can you explain this migration? out of California and going to red you mean, state, you mean, blue state. Well, hold on, you, you mean the, the, the last two years, more Floridians going to California than Californians going to Florida? No, I, I put <laughs> up on, I put up on just, the By screen. the way, that's gonna be fun to fact check, so we'll just start right there. California has no peers. Uh, California dominates, sizable 21 state 
populations combined. It's the fifth largest economy in the world. We dominate number one manufacturing state. We dominate in two-way trade and research None and of development, that's of you. access to innovation, more scientists, <laughs> None of that's more researchers, of you. more engineers, more Nobel laureates in the state of California than any other state in the nation, the finest system of higher education. It's the birthplace of life science and biotech and nanotechnology. We dominate in green tech. We dominate in high tech. We dominate in artificial intelligence. So with respect, I think it's an interesting campaign strategy for Ron DeSantis to be bashing a state of 40 million Americans when California simply has no peers. Well, that, that's a pretty slick way of not answering your question. Again, he went on a yep. binge of putting out a lot of left-wing platitudes. Here's what I would say. I, I talked to a lot of the people that have moved from California to Florida, and we never used to get people from California to Florida or really anywhere in these, because why would you leave California? It's got the best weather, Ron, great Ron, natural twice, forces. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, last so, but one of the things that I did, I had, uh, I was Governor talking to a gentleman, a couple. Guys, yeah, I know. guys, I'm going to let this, a, I'm going to let the debate breathe. But it's his turn. Let's take, let's take turns. So I was talking to a fella who had made the move from California uh, to Florida, and he was telling me that Florida is much better governed, uh, safer, better budget, uh, lower taxes, all this stuff. And he's really happy with the quality of life. And then he paused and he said, and oh, by the way, I'm Gavin Newsom's father-in-law. So we do count Gavin's in-laws as some of the people that have fled California um, and come to the state of Florida. And, and why, are we, why are we getting people to come? We have a 50-year low in the crime rate. You don't see, in the last 10 years, we've had a 45% decline in homelessness. California's had a 45% increase in homelessness. We back the blue. I was walking the streets of San Francisco a couple months ago, and I had some of the cops in San Francisco do a beeline to come over to me, and I didn't know what they were going to say. And they're like, we want to thank you for standing for law enforcement, because we don't get that support in the All state right. of California. So people understand me... quality of life matters. They understand that Florida's doing it right. And I can tell you, the numbers speak for themselves. We have way more Let people move moving on. to this state than leaving. Gavin can't say the opposite. More people are leaving California than are moving into more California. Let me, let, me, coming, let me bring up. Coming to California the other way around the last two years. But let's talk about crime. Oh, wait, wait, talk, wait, wait. So, but, oh, but, Governor, but, hold, hold on. I think this Governor, wait a minute. I think hold on a second. Candle from 50. Thank you very much. He said a lot of things were factually untrue, including we'll that 50-year crime low, which his own law enforcement team 20, said 20, should not be using. You, you have yet to address the issue, but I asked you twice. You don't want to answer it. But the issue of why the migration out of red states I'm sorry, well, out of blue states. We just rest. established more Floridians coming to California in the last I'm two asking, years than the overall. Overall, you had a net loss of seven. You didn't establish it. It's a you fact. just asserted it. It's a fact. No, it's not a fact. It All is right, a fact. Moving on. Let's go. Your states have Probably vastly is, they're, different they're literally income running. tax rates. Okay. It's, it is what it is. These are the facts. California's highest rate for top earners, 13%. Married couple, for example, in California, earning a medium income of 84000 They have a 6% income tax in the state of California. Florida's income tax rate is 0% across all salaries. But it goes beyond income taxes. Property taxes are lower in California, but everything else is higher. Let's take a look at the numbers. These are the facts. Well, there's the no state income tax, tax in, in California, 0.75 percent. Florida, 0.91 percent. Sales tax, California, 7.25 percent. Florida, 6 percent. Gas tax rate, California, 77 cents a gallon. That is a low estimate. It's up to a dollar when you include mandatory fees. And in Florida, it's 35 cents. Corporate income tax, California, 8.84 percent. Florida, 5.5 percent. Governor Newsom, this is yes. your question. Let me ask you. Obviously, you support a different philosophy, which Absolutely. is higher taxes. Yes. Uh, no, well, no, no, no. Hold said, on. <laughs> well, we have a tax question, guys. This is, this is a very that. different, Everyone clip uh, a different that. approach, and I agree with you completely. Uh, he has one of the most regressive tax rates in the United States of America. He's the number three most regressive state Base. in America. I don't pay any taxes. And what that means income. is simply this. Who does he tax? He taxes low-income workers more than we tax millionaires and billionaires. We don't even in the have income tax in Florida. The That's not even. How does that even work? Who, Ron, are you for? It's a factual. Florida lie has no state, that the state income of California tax. California's That's high not tax possible. has the highest tax rate, but for whom? And it's a foundational and fundamental Everyone. difference. You look at states like Texas. Overwhelming majority of Texans pay more tax in, taxes than the state of California. So again, because they it's make who more money, you're for, and I think those values matter. And I appreciate you bringing up the issue of taxes. How many people leave Florida to go to California because they pay less taxes? Uh, I've not seen that. Are people going to, from Florida to New York because they pay less taxes? Of course not. They come yep. to Florida because they pay lower taxes. We don't even have an income tax. 
And yet California has a higher sales tax than we do, and that's one of the true. things that we do. Also, but here's I've the lived thing. in both states. And, and this I'll, is give, all true. I'll give Gavin credit. He did at least admit in his first answer, he's joined at the hip with Biden and Harris. He thinks Biden and Harris have done a great job. He thinks the economy is working because of their policies for Americans, and they are not. And so what California represents is the Biden-Harris agenda on steroids. Uh, they would love nothing more than to get four more years uh, to be able to take the California model nationally. That would be disastrous for working people in well, this country. Well, talk about working people. They pay more in your state than the state of California charges for billionaires and millionaires. And it's just a it's value just proposition. True. It's this a just fact. not Again, true. You can't make You have six up. or seven You're dollar a gallon the, gas. How do, they, how do they afford that? These are folks that are blue collar people. You were talking You're going to force everybody to buy an state. electric vehicle. No. How are they going to be able to afford Think about California, they have one of the highest inequality rates because, yeah, they've got Silicon Valley billionaires. They've got a lot of very wealthy people. They've yep. got a lot of people that are on government assistance, yep. but they've hollowed out their middle class. That uh oh. No. So over. They're trying to sabotage Meatball Ron. This is so sad. All right, let me refresh this. Let me refresh this. Fox, what are you doing? No! This is sabotage, okay? Meatball Ron was winning a debate, and then, um... And then, and then, like, the world couldn't handle it. All right, let me refresh. Come on. All right, anyways, while we uh, sit here and try to fix this, being very slow... Okay, what are you doing? Chat, it's so over. Yeah, Ron DeSantis is going to run away with this debate. I think he already has, because I think it's pretty clear. Um, you know, Newsom did not really come with any arguments to the table, largely oh, because right he doesn't have any. And so all he's doing, I mean, you look at the opening statement, more democracy, blah, blah, blah. If he's just going to throw out generic, like, cheesy platitudes the whole night, and objectively, like, the record speaks for itself. Florida is a doing better as a state than California by any metric you want to talk about. Okay, here we go. Let me ask the question. Let me to cover for his Ron, if I may answer the question. California has lower taxes, more, lower than 32 states for working families in the middle class. Significantly lower taxes so than places that. That's what like you're Texas. Do you support a 6% income tax for I'm people? Against, a couple I'm against regressive taxes that advantage billionaires and millionaires over working families and the working okay. poor. People in his state pay more taxes on the low end uh, than me, we tax people on how, the high how end. How does That's paying a fact, $7 a, a gallon gas help working people? That doesn't help working people <laughs> at all. How does paying an 8% sales tax help working people. That doesn't help working people at all. Uh, they have the highest <laughs> taxes what, in the seven, nation. Six? People flee to be able to save money uh, to get out of California. And you have working class people that and move there's to these no other state states. Income tax. Their dollars go much further. But here's the thing. They want to take this Bidenomics and they want to double down on this for the next four years. How many people are able to afford groceries now compared to what you were doing three or four years ago? I talked to people, you know, I, I talked to a woman who had, a, had a, a, a cart full of groceries going in and they're ringing it up and it got to be so expensive she has to take a lot of the stuff out. That didn't used to be the case. People used to be able to work hard and get ahead. That is not true under Joe Biden. And you know what, Sean, one more final thing. California's unemployment rate is 60 percent higher then Florida's unemployment rate. Well, Our unemployment rate is 2.8 percent. There's a 4.8 percent. Why? Question, Governor. Because it's a command and control economy. They have a political agenda that they're pursuing. Let at me ask the that question. People. Honor with the question of jobs. I think it's important. You know what? That affects. By the way, that, by the way, that affects everybody. Biden administration, the last three years, it's is, been a massive job Biden class of paying job you creation. tonight? 3.9 percent. I thought this was state versus state. Three point, no, but it's about yeah. the United States of America. I thought this guy was running for president of the United States. If you you're are running too. For a you just well, you are too. For a exactly. Third, you just like won't admit it. You will not admit it. Term. Why don't you right, admit gentlemen. that you're running? Hold on. All right, we can't <laughs> talk. We can't talk. I'm going to move He's on to the next question. The unemployment rate in Florida right now is just 2.8 percent, as you stated. Uh, and California ranks second worst in the country at 4.8 percent. Because everyone's on welfare. This question goes to Governor DeSantis, and then you'll have a chance to respond. Them. Governor DeSantis. 
Well, well, right. I mean, uh, they tax too much. They regulate too much. They have a political agenda. It's not a good climate for business. They've lost a lot of companies. A lot of companies have moved to Texas. We have had some to Florida, but they've lost a lot of companies to Texas because they're not doing a good job uh, looking out for folks and not creating a good business environment. And, um, you know, when I have people that come to Florida, uh, they tell me, you know, you guys actually want us to succeed in Florida. And they feel like when they're in California, they don't want Disney's business telling? to succeed. Is that what Disney's and all that saying, stuff. the Tampa Bay Rays? Well, actually, yeah, uh, I think that's an interesting point with Disney thing? because uh, I had how Disney many corporations left California COVID, and we made them a fortune. And we saved a lot of jobs. You had Disney closed inexplicably for over a year. Oh, love you were not following COVID. science. You were a lockdown governor. You did a lot of damage to your people. Oh. You had more kids locked out of school for a longer period of time in California than anywhere else in the country. It was the working class kids. It was the middle income kids. His kids were in private school. They were in class we'll in get, person. We'll get to he locked let people me, out let me, because let me, of the wait, teachers' no, union. You're gonna, he is owned by the teachers' union. You will never cross the teachers' union. This is union. just a lot of hot Lock, air. stock, and Let's talk about COVID. Let's talk about your record on COVID. You passed an emergency declaration before the state of California did. You closed down your beaches, your bars, your restaurants. False. It's a fact. You had quarantines. False. You had quarantines. For a month you had versus all over a, the state like of two Cal years. Uh, of Florida. By the way, I didn't say that. Donald Trump laid you out on this. Dead to right. You that's did that. True. You followed science. You followed Fauci, that's Ron not, That's not false. He followed science. He true. followed Fauci. You and were why promoting. Why did everyone leave Hold California? on. How is that an own from your perspective, then? You were promoting we vaccines. Were you even wore a mask in September, Sean. You were closed. If it's okay with you. We'll do this. Why were you closed for so long? Why don't we do this so in a long? way where we both can have Why were you closed for so long? You wore you a were mask closed. with right, guys, Donald guys, Trump closed. outside I'm to let it in September 2020. Gavin he did all of that Anderson. until he decided to fall prey to the fringe of his party. And as a consequence of that, Ron, tens of thousands of people lost their lives. Not true. The equivalent, if I had your policies, the equivalent of 10 9-11s. Tens of thousands of people lost their lives. And for what, Ron? Those are more lies. In fact, the Lancet just did a study. <laughs> Florida had a lower standardized COVID death rate than California did. That's a Lancet me, study. Me, one more thing. One more thing. The other thing we had, the, the other thing you California had, your California had higher excess your mortality than, All right, than gentlemen, Florida. Gentlemen, Let me talk about that, the excess mortality hang, hang, real quick. Honestly, because the hold excess on a second mortality this, is other things. I want to ask you both. If we'll slow down, I want everyone to be heard. If I can ask you, I really do want this to breathe. I want this debate to breathe. I want it to organically develop. Uh, to do that, I need both your cooperation. I don't want to be a hall monitor. It's not my style, all right? Uh, you mentioned COVID. Let me go to COVID. And I plan to bring this up later, but you both Newsom took very is running harder for president than Ron Governor Newsom, is at the moment, which is the nation's funny. first stay at home order on March 19th of 2020. Governor DeSantis, you took a lot of heat for reopening schools. You opened schools in Florida in August of 2020. All right, so here's the data, which I think is yeah, important. Sooner. This is where the facts come in. Uh, your state's death rates were almost yeah. identical. This is factually untrue. Uh, hold on. Factually yeah. untrue. Okay. The na uh, and by the way, both your states, with such different approaches, which is pretty fascinating, were both lower, significantly lower, than the national average. These numbers come straight from the CDC. Yeah. So, Governor well, Newsom, capita, how, do you, death, well, how do you explain that? The facts. Per capita death rates that's what that is. in the state of Florida were 29%, 29% per capita higher. 29 percent, tens that's not what the of stats thousands say right there. of people, <laughs> tens of thousands of people Don't unnecessarily lie about died. It. He put the graphic tens up there. Don't lie about it. You don't need to lie about it. Because your policy Just understand. You're lying you don't about need to lie record. about it. No, it's not. You were a lockdown governor. No, it's you not. locked down. Right, one at a time, Gavin Newsom, finish your thought. You locked down your beaches, thought. bars, and restaurants. That's just a fact. He's running away from his record. He's running away from the fact. Tens of thousands of people died unnecessarily because he caved. It's 29 percent higher death rate in the state of Florida the versus the state of California. Okay, quick Tens response, Governor. You, should, you showed quick, the, the stats. Back. The stats are very clear. One at a time. Uh, on a per capita age-adjusted basis, California and Florida basically the same. Now, why is that important? Because Gavin Newsom did huge damage to people in California. He ruined livelihoods. We reopened the, the, the state very quickly. Watch, we man. saved thousands of jobs. We saved hundreds of th hundred thousands of jobs, thousands of businesses. We had our kids in school. He had the kids locked out of school because of the teachers' union. That is having a generational impact. 
California has one of the lowest literacy rates in the country. In the most recent NAEP exam, Florida came in number three for fourth grade reading. California was far, far behind. So you should apologize for not getting your kids in well, school. You, Why didn't you get the kids in school in the summer of 2020 like we did? The only you person, bowed to the ki- teachers the only union. Person, you didn't do the job you should John, have done. Right, the only person, quick, quick, the quick, only person right, one at a time, quick answer. is Ron DeSantis for the tens of thousands of lives that died unnecessarily because he played played to the fringe of his party. we got to take a break. And w- Pass the, I'll finish your thought. No, and when it comes to the issue of schools, you better be careful. You had more learning lost during COVID than the national average in the state of California. <laughs> we out. It's a fact. More learning loss. Your economy contracted more in 2020. Quick break. Expanded slower than California in 2021. More to come on this topic. Uh, more to come on this on this debate. This, Another I know it's starting off. Next segment, I guess. It's, it's, it's been, ver- it's been rather segment. dull as, as, at the start, but... Uh, Anyway, we've got a lot to get to. Coming up, uh, many important topics that we're going to be talking okay. about, including one issue where might you might find some agreement, actually, as we continue okay. the blue state, okay. red okay. state debate. All we are right. live. We are in Alpharetta, Georgia. Thank you for being with us. All right, so as we go to the commercial break, uh, let me first get caught up on Super Chats because I don't want to miss any of those. Let me see what we got here. Do... Cheney Beanie for $2 says Meatball Ron versus Patrick Bateman. That is indeed what is happening on your screen right now. Let me actually, I'm going to, because I don't want to get copyrighted by the commercials. Uh, We're going to turn it off and then go back when the, uh, you know, the thing comes back. All right. And I know we got Kendall Weiler. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while for $50. Who says, and my boy Vince is still crushing it. By the way, I am still a male. Well, good to see you have not transitioned yet, Kendall Weiler. Uh, wonderful news that the whole country is celebrating at. Thank you very much for the $50. God bless you and God bless all of our super chatters. And let's see, we got one here. Gianna for $2 says over 200 viewers. Yay. Merry Christmas. Yes. Merry Christmas to you too. All right. It's early. Merry Christmas. It's almost about to be December tomorrow. This is so true. Okay. With that said, my thoughts so far, um, Yeah, Ron DeSantis is running away with this debate, all right? At least at the end, Newsom tried to get some, like, actual facts and logic and statistics on the question itself and whatever. But I think overall, what you've seen is the contrast and kind of all the worst fears, if you're rooting for DeSantis, have been sort of neutralized by the fact that it seems pretty clear to me um, all that... Newsom is basically doing for the most part especially with those first two questions is he's just throwing out talking points okay literally the opening statement was you know Ron DeSantis says here's why Florida is doing better than California this this and that what does Newsom say my democracy okay and I will say this watching this you know I remember back in 2020 because I used to live in California thinking you know Gavin Newsom was not the most charismatic guy and I thought he was kind of overrated in that regard but it seemed like the past two years he's kind of been trying to reinvent that image of himself and I was giving him the benefit of the, of the doubt but I think what you're in many ways seeing right now is that has not changed this whole idea of like Newsom being charismatic and people say he's actually a strong liberal debater and all of that well right now I don't think he's doing a very good job of it at all at all um and I I think what you're seeing is he's actually highly overrated in that regard because I mean look at who he's debating too with all due respect Ron DeSantis is probably the least charismatic guy Maybe not the least, but one of the least charismatic guys left in the Republican field, okay? And right now, Ron DeSantis is absolutely wiping the floor with Newsom, making him look stupid, frankly, I thought for the majority of that, okay? And so if Newsom's just going to kind of throw out a bunch of nonsense and half the time just revert to generic liberal talking points, and it sounds very clear that that's what he's doing is spewing out talking points, it's going to be a long night for this guy. Uh, so, you know, props, props to DeSantis. Cause like I said, not voting from the primary, not supporting him, but I, I, I genuinely, for the sake of the, the culture and politics and all that, I didn't want to see him screw this up. And so far he hasn't screwed this up. So good on him. I think he's doing a very good job and much better than any of the other Republican debates. Frankly, Sheeny Beanie for another two says Gavin is slimy because he has charisma like Obama, but that's the thing. I don't think he has the charisma of Obama at all. He is like good looking, right? He's got the whole kind of slick look to him. 
But uh, I think Obama way outshines him in charisma, and I think it's kind of his his image that if people are more infatuated with. But thank you for the two. Uh, let's see what else. Real Texan and politics for five dollars says Ron fits state politics like a glove. Federal politics not so much, and I think that's what you're seeing here too, because in this specific. Uh, situation he's doing quite well when it comes to him having to debate the state politics record versus California he's shining in this so I think it's true and I think the point I've made about this before which is either maybe he's not ready for national politics or it's just not really his his place right because I think he's doing a very good job in this situation Rob Roberto Suarez for five dollars says the left is destroying this country people open their eyes thank you for the five and it is very true and with that we return and we are back here um with the debate so let's go gentlemen let's move on to the issue of borders Joe Biden's message to illegal immigrants during his campaign was let them come I'd have the tape but I said I wouldn't play the tape. And since taking office, Biden said he's gotten control of the border. Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas, uh, Biden's press secretary, Corinne Jean-Pierre, have all said the border is either secure or the border is closed. Yet the Border Patrol says, well, guess what? They have been a record 6.5 million encounters with illegal immigrants and so-called asylum seekers at the border since President Biden took office. The administration says, well, they don't know how many people actually are in the country illegally. Gentlemen, the American people, I ask you, um, I believe it's your turn, uh, Governor Newsom, have the American people on the issue of borders, you're defending the Biden administration, they're saying the border's secure. They're saying the border's closed. Those are the numbers from our own Border Patrol. Are the American people being lied to? I don't think they're being lied to. The Biden administration put out a comprehensive plan day one when he got sworn into office three years ago, and the Republican Party didn't touch it. They haven't moved on it. They play politics with us. And I'll be honest with you, I think there's probably one person I wouldn't listen to on this topic more than the guy that I'm standing next to, Ron DeSantis. He is absolutely he lacks any credibility on the issue of immigration. When he was in Congress, he supported amnesty. That when he's in false. Congress, you supported John Boehner's bill. It's a that fact. False. When you were in Congress, you supported I killed Obama's. John you supported bill. Obama's efforts that is to false. advance comprehensive reform. False. The last guy you want to talk to on the issue immigration. Your immigration policy can best be described as a governor from the state of Florida going into another state, the state of Texas, lying to migrants, promising them jobs and housing, sending them to an island, Martha's Vineyard, and then sending them to a parking lot in Sacramento, California. I met with those migrants that you lied to under false pretense. That kind of gamesmanship, using human beings as pawns, I think is disqualifying. So again, a guy who stands here who's been out on the Republican debate stage saying, well, he's going to be tough, he's going to shoot people with backpacks, uh, and that he has a strategy to potentially even invade our second largest trading partner, uh, hey. Mexico, that has a <laughs> record of supporting amnesty and supporting reforms under the Obama administration, is the last guy to be standing on stage talking about the issue of immigration reform tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, it's deja Notice vu Notice he doesn't say anything about himself. That flurry of lies. This is a guy that says the Biden administration is not lying to the public about the border. They go to the White House uh, briefing room every day. They say the border's secure. They are lying to you. We know that that's not true. Gavin Newsom is lying to you when he says somehow I supported these things, which I didn't do. He's also <laughs> lying to you uh, about what it's going to take to solve this problem. California is a sanctuary state. Uh, they thumb their nose at federal immigration Correct. law. And this has real consequences. Uh, there was an illegal alien, Herbert Nixon Flores, uh, who was in L.A., uh, in custody. He was a repeat criminal. ICE wanted to take him into custody because then they would be able to deport him. L.A. refuses to work with ICE, and so they wouldn't turn him over. They end up releasing him on the street. He True ends story. up murdering the mother of a three-year-old little girl. Uh, that, yep. Those policies are deadly. Uh, they do not work. And I'll tell you this. Uh, the, the Martha's Vineyard transport, Martha's Vineyard said it was a sanctuary jurisdiction. Kind of reminds me about Gavin Newsom when he restricted Californians, then he went to the French Laundry. These liberal elites, they like to impose burdens on you. They don't want to have to face the consequences of their actions. So we've got a lot of elites who want open borders, 
yeah. who lecture I, everybody else about it, well, then the minute they have to deal with any of the consequences, oh man, all hell breaks loose. Well, how about and they the get consequences? Upset. Of, how about we we're moving on. We're, we're moving to the next American. question. I mean, We'd be much better on the off same topic. The case. On the on the same topic. This is important. This is a very important question. Good. While some migrants I know want to come to America for a better life for themselves and their family, find the American dream, I, I totally sympathize with them. Too bad. Uh, many good people fleeing very bad situations abroad. Um, but others are abusing the asylum process and in the process in search of, of where they're coming from, well, we're now learning that many are coming from some of our top geopolitical foes, countries with little to no vetting or people that are coming in, they're not being vetted. Look at these numbers. Between October 2021, October 2023, border agents encountered 6,386 nationals from Afghanistan, 3,153 from Egypt, 659 from Iran, the number one state sponsor of terror, 538 from Syria, 12,605 from Russia, and a whopping 26,113 from China. Now, my question, the next question goes to you, Governor Newsom. What are the odds that, that Biden's open borders have allowed terrorists and terror cells unvetted into this country? Is that a clear and present danger to every American? The odds are 100 percent. Of course our enemies are going to take advantage of this. He opened the border. Yep. He's not uh, vi he's violating his oath of office to take care that the laws are faithfully executed. He's knowingly having eight million come in. And yes, there's criminal aliens. There are terrorists. There's a lot of fentanyl that we've had tens of thousands of fentanyl deaths. I've had the, uh, uh, I've met a lot of angel parents who have lost kids to fentanyl overdose. And the, and the problem is you know, you'll have a, a, high, a college kid that may take some pill not knowing that there's fentanyl in it. And then right there, that can be fatal. They're poisoning our people. And Joe Biden is sitting on his hands. He refuses to take care of the border. He refuses to hold the drug cartels accountable. This is the vision of Biden, Harris, Newsom. Open borders, Americans suffer, and Americans continue to die because of fentanyl overdose. There will be, unfortunately, a terrorist attack at some point that we'll be able to trace back to our southern border. I got, God just, forbid, by the way, do you see that is, risk, Governor Newsom? Hold on, hold Governor, on. I mean, do, you see, do you see the risk? Joe Biden put out not only a comprehensive plan, he consistently puts up plans. Hold on, no, but Sean, there, no one believes that, though. I'm gonna answer, no one in this country question. believes that. I, I support border security. I think the asylum system is broken. I believe that we need... I understand that. I, I'm, the one that I'm the only guy here that's a border state governor. You're trolling folks and trying to find migrants to play political games to try to get some news and attention so you can out-Trump Trump. And by the way, how's that going for you, Ron? You're down <laughs> 41 points in your own home state. On the issue of immigration, okay, Joe so Biden now put he's a $14 actually got him with billion one, dollar immigration finally. package up <laughs> in front of Congress. 2,300 border agents, as well as custom officials. 1,000 new law enforcement officers to deal with a fentanyl issue. And by the way, that's a major issue in your state. 41% higher overdose rates than the state of California. And here's what I haven't heard. Not a peep. From Ron DeSantis, they want to demagogue this issue. You want to play politics with issues. You don't want to solve this issue. Why don't you lead your Go, party Governor Newsom. and support that fourteen right, billion dollar? Hold on, I have a follow-up. That was the only Governor Newsom, Newsom win so far. I appreciate your answer. That one uh, you have mentioned comprehensive immigration reform many times. It's not happened under Joe Biden. I don't think it's going to happen. He put next a detailed year. plan, and but, Republicans but me, in Congress but, refused to act let me, on it. Let me, it takes let me finish my Congress question. to work my with this administration. Was, yeah, because we don't want amnesty. With all of these millions and millions of people coming into this. country, country unvetted. The question was and remains, is this a clear and present danger from the countries I put up on the screen? That's why, is that a clear and present danger to America? The the and is, what do you do in the interim before you That's why the president have... of the United States put a $14 billion package in front of Congress they can act on today. And what would that... They haven't what, done anything what would that in two package years, do? this Congress. What do you Literally support? not a single piece you support of, a of legislation. Law? I support the $14 billion package the president's put forward that includes 2,300 border agents and customs officials. By the way, also includes $850 million in new technology for border security. You hear nothing from Ron DeSantis. You and hear nothing, amnesty. Sean, respectfully. You hear nothing from the Republican Party. They play politics. I'm almost the out of president time. Put Before the, the break. plan up to address oh. Does it worry? Anxiety. Commercial breaks every two seconds. Welcome to Fox. Does it worry you that our top geopolitical foes, the number one state sponsor of terror, Iran, China, Russia, uh, the, Afghanistan, Syria, 
that they're at our southern border. You're a border state governor. Well, I put does that, the does that concern guard. you at all? The why, security why else aspect. Would I put the, the answer is yes. Why else would I it put does. the National Guard? Why would I have just increased it by 50 percent on the largest port in the Western Hemisphere in my state? I mean, this guy has no record. Is no. I mean, the fact that you supported amnesty, the fact That's you supported Obama reforms, That's those are facts. They're just Such simple facts. The you're fact that your greatest contribution, Ron, you to this debate is well, shooting listen, people with backpacks. I don't mind. I mean, that's so inhumane. I don't it's mind so him lying to me. Right. I don't mind Gavin lying to me, but I do mind him lying to you. Uh, he is sitting there <laughs> saying that Joe Biden is willing to solve this problem. Is there anybody out there yeah, that no one actually believes, that. believes this? Support Joe Biden plan. created this problem. So if plan. he's willing to lie to you about that, you know he's lying to you about all these other facts and figures, uh, about all this other stuff. He's just throwing stuff out to see what sticks against yeah. the wall. This is a slick, slippery politician yeah. whose state is failing, people are leaving his state, and he's trying to he's run interference right. for his failure. We've got to take our, we gotta take our, second, we gotta take our second break. We're gonna, when we come back, we have a lot more ground to cover. Quick break, we have a lot of ground to cover. More with Governors uh, DeSantis and Newsom, the great blue red state debate as we continue from Alpharetta, Georgia. Again, thank you for being with us. All right. And as we go to commercial break, once again, I will, you know, talk about it, give you all my thoughts here. First, though, let me get caught up. Let me see how many super chats we got. Okay, we got one. JD for $5 says the U.S., by the way, commercial break, feel free to super chat. U.S. isn't a utopia with milk and honey flowing on gold streets for everyone to migrate to. No one is entitled to come here, support people in their own countries. 100%. Thank you for the five, JD, and it is completely true. Here is the thing about the, uh, the border debate. Okay, and obviously we all have basically the same opinion on it, I would assume. But the thing about this one issue, the immigration issue, especially the illegal immigration issue, particularly in terms of the general public, Democrats are very unpopular on this. Because the vast majority of independents don't like what's happening at the border. By the way, this is a big reason Trump won in 2016 and people were like, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Why People were like, how did he pull off that miracle? Big issue was this immigration issue, right? And the sheer fact of the matter is that outside of your 20 to 30% of people in this country who are pure Joe Biden partisans, nobody believes that Biden is doing a good job at the border. Like, just people don't believe that, right? And that's the case that Newsom has been going out here and trying to make, which is that actually Biden is doing a good job at the border and he cares and it's the Republicans' fault. And it's like, regardless of if, if that's true or not, by the way, it's not true. But even if it were true, the sheer fact of the matter, you look at the current situation, nobody believes that. Nobody believes that Democrats are good on the border. Even a lot of Democrats themselves, even a lot of liberals, Bill Maher's a prime example, right? Do not like their own party stances on the border. And it's just inherently a losing issue for them. And what's interesting for Gavin Newsom is he doesn't necessarily have to go out there and defend that, right? He could talk about his own state. He could talk about his own record or whatever it is. But instead, he's dying on the hill of defending the national Biden record. That's a losing position in the eyes of not just obviously Republicans, clearly, but also I would argue just most voters in this country. Again, nobody believes that Biden's doing a good job on the border. And I think Newsom, by fundamentally trying to argue that, it didn't even, like, DeSantis didn't even have to say much there. Newsom, by trying to argue that, already makes himself look stupid. And it's, it's like, it's already a losing argument. Again, in the eyes of the perhaps undecided voters who are watching this. Because again, and by the way, I think polling backs this up and common sense backs this up. And it's common sense too. Democrats, immigration is one of their most unpopular issues. And by dying on the hill of defending Biden, Gavin Newsom does himself no favors. And I think that's pretty straightforward. But anyways, travel. Tra okay, trav to travel to the world. Thank you for $5. By the way, we got about 400 viewers. Everyone be sure to hit like on the stream. S for five says, just got here. Is it worth watching from the beginning for uh, tomorrow? Who is winning? Thank you for the five. Newsom is embarrassing himself. Um, and I, I, think, I think he's just making himself look stupid. And... He, he, I mean, to be fair, going into this debate, we knew he didn't have much to argue with, but you thought maybe, hey, Ron DeSantis, not the most charismatic Republican, maybe Newsom has something up his sleeve. He doesn't have anything up his sleeve. I think he's proving right now 
He's actually highly overrated. Again, a lot of people in both parties kind of have... And by the way, I did going into this night because I just kind of saw his national media tour and was a little bit deceived. There's a general sentiment around him that he's some type of strong liberal debater. You know, he's one of the most articulate Democrats and he's all the... I think the charisma is a ruse simply because, you know, he's a good looking guy. Because the truth of the matter is, listening to him tonight, you're actually seeing the Gavin Newsom that I remember living in California from like 2019, 2020, which is he actually is not all that. And I think he's proving tonight he's highly overrated um, in that regard. Certainly more articulate than Joe Biden. But that's not saying much. All right, that said, folks, thanks for the super chats. We are now live here once again, so let's get back to this. All right. Governor Ron DeSantis, again, thank you both for being here. We're going to take a little breathing room. I don't, I don't mind the debate taking on a life of its own, but let each other breathe. Um, I don't want to be the hall monitor. Please don't turn me into that. Anyway, let's, uh, let's look at the issue of crime. FBI numbers, violent crime nationally for each of your states. Keep in mind, this statistic shows what is the combined rate of homicide, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, the year 2022. On the national level, the rate was 380.7 offenses per 100,000 people. In California, meanwhile, the rate was much higher, 499.5 offenses per 100,000. In Florida, lower, 258. Point nine offenses per 100,000. Governor Newsom, let me start with you. Your numbers are way higher than the national average. How do you explain that when safety and security, I would argue, is a prerequisite for the pursuit of happiness? Well, I couldn't agree with you more. We're near 50-year lows down. So that's almost twice as much. And he's trying to spin that to say California's doing good. People are leaving California in droves, largely because public safety has collapsed. Uh, they have, True. I mean, it, you, you go, when Californians come to Florida, one of the things they'll say, it's almost like an out-of-body experience. They can go to the store, get toothpaste off the shelf, pay for it, and leave. Because in a lot of these places in California, everything's under lock and key because they basically legalize retail theft. They have chosen in California to put the interests of the criminals over public safety. Uh, they treat... Uh, they're easier on sex offenders. They're easier on all these crimes that are leading to a collapse in the quality of life. And if you just walk around San Francisco, uh, you will see, and I think it's interesting, Gavin Newsom was mayor of San Francisco. So he took the San Francisco model, turned that into a template for California's collapse. Now the left wants to take the California model and use that as a template for America's collapse. Let, let, we cannot let that happen. Hold on, he, he, he got to stop. But, but hold governor, on. Hold, no, no, the, I got a follow-up question. Rate you brought in Jacksonville, up Florida, you brought, the, compared governor, to San Francisco, is 126 percent higher. Governor, in let me let me bring up. Your, it's 84 percent higher. The next question higher. dovetails in Tampa, into this. It's 75 percent higher. What? What? Let me also say, I, I, what are you that's talking about? That's because of when it comes jabbering. To I know no, you like to jabber. By the way, those are all like easily to, I know you like to, to lie. Am I allowed to say that on YouTube? You it's you because of a word that starts with D. That, that's that's your, why. Your crime is what higher. Doing we know your crime is higher. Gentlemen, gentlemen, what are you doing about the gun murder rate in your state? We'll let the audience look at the numbers, the FBI numbers, and decide. According to the Gun Control Advocacy Group, every town for gun safety, okay? California has the most, as you support, I know, Governor, restrictive gun laws in the United States. Yes. Uh, Florida has the 19th most restrictive. Yet, if you look at the year 2019, when each of you took office, uh, California has had 21 mass shootings. Florida has had nine. Now, that is according to a USA Today, AP, Northeastern uh, University database uh, data. Keep in mind, a mass killing is defined as the intentional killing of four or more victims, excluding the deaths of unborn children and the offenders by any means within a 24 period of time. Um, I believe, Governor DeSantis, you get this first. Go ahead. What California wants to do is they want to make it harder for law-abiding citizens to defend themselves. Then they go easy on the criminals who are perpetrating the crime. They don't stand up for the men and women of law enforcement. That's why a lot of people have left the All state right, because they the don't get spot. the support from the communities that they need. And you know, Gavin told another lie. 
He said we made it easier for felons to do. Felons are not allowed to possess firearms. That's federal law. That's been long. No background checks. That is an no absolute lie carry. that he's saying no like that. Background that has nothing to do with buying or purchasing a weapon. You have so to that's just a lie. A Another lie check. that's coming up. But here's the thing. In People are leaving state. California in droves because he has failed to stand up for public safety. All they right, are restarting. on an ideological joyride to let people out of prison early, to go easy on them. Heck, your buddy, uh, Gavin's buddy in Los Angeles, Gascon, he doesn't even prosecute. When you I have, a... I, I, when I was in Southern California for the Reagan debate, uh, a lot of the women tell me they have to take off all their jewelry just to be able to go shopping because otherwise they're going to get mugged. That is the reality that people are facing in California. Right. Gavin can try to put lipstick on that pig, but the fact of the matter is he has failed the people of California. Governor Newsom. No, I love this guy talking about backing the blue when you dangled pardons for January 6th insurrectionists, 85 of them <laughs> that were literally were charged with attacking law enforcement. You talk a big game about backing the blue. With all due respect to the crime rate, again, he's not answering the fact that he has a higher murder rate than the state of California, a 66 percent higher gun death rate than the state of California. And I can easily answer this point. Gun safety saves lives. I don't think it. I know it. And the data bears that out in the state of California. California proudly does lead in terms of common sense gun safety. Common sense gun safety saves lives. You had the chance to do something meaningful. You had a chance to do it's something not on common behalf sense. of those it's retarded. families. You did the exact opposite. You moved in the exact opposite direction okay. with all due respect look right, at your own it. backyard ron so you're not mining that, your backyard on this that, issue i will do that because we have some of the we had two radical left soros district attorneys like your buddy gascon in la one in tampa one in orlando they were endangering the public and i removed them from their post <laughs> gavin newsom has not lifted a finger to rein in gascon in la uh that that city has collapsed that county's collapsed no, don't, because don't, don't, he don't is insult, not enforcing the law so that's city. just and right, here's the thing American this city. is that's what's just, happening that california just model we're we're you just not, insulted I'm jacksonville and orlando 15 seconds we got to go break slime ball I mean, you, you're running for president of the united states you're talking down the great state of california you're talking down one of the great american cities los angeles that's insulting you're and talking you're down florida you're trying to what obfuscate the? the facts that you <laughs> have a higher murder rate idiot. in the state of florida in the state of california <laughs> we, we got to take the lowest crime rates we've had in 50 years we'll, we'll have more with governor DeSantis, governor gavin newsom on the other side as we continue the great state debate blue versus red there's hardly any differences a lot of ground to cover thank you for being with us we are in beautiful alpharetta georgia thank you for joining us on hannity all right i i think it's pretty clear if it wasn't already uh red eagle politics says that newsom is an evasive fraud that's that's basically what it is he does a lot of deflecting he does a lot of gotcha. By the way, you also notice he keeps trying to turn it into the national culture wars. I don't think that's effective, right? Because notice in his opening statement, he says democracy, and then he says January 6th, and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And then he tries to go on the limb of defending Biden. And the thing about that is that people can tell when you drag that type of stuff into the debate that you are being innovative fraud right that you are being kind of like a partisan hack and just uh, like a a piece of paper of talking points and the fact that he keeps going to that i understand what he's trying to do which is he's campaigning for potentially in case biden you know whatever happens there oh he'll be the nominee of the party and so sure he's talking to like liberal voters and i get that but i think to most people in the center watching the debate when you have one guy who's trying to talk specifically about what the debate's supposed to be about, which is my state versus your state, and then the other guy, which is ironic because DeSantis is the one currently officially running for president and Newsom is not. But Newsom comes off way more as the guy who's just trying to run for president because he keeps trying to just tongue-in-cheek like throw in these national culture wars that, that, again, I don't think are actually helping his arguments because it's just making him yes look like kind of like this just slime ball politician who's trying to angle up for, to run for president and i think uh you know that's what you're seeing that's what you're seeing as for the gun debate itself i don't think it really got anywhere whatever but uh that's just what i noticed with that said let me see if we've got any super chats i'm not sure if we did in this segment but we are in commercial break so feel free to uh send in if you want and i think is it is that joe biden on the screen there's a guy riding a bike 
There's an old guy riding a bike in the commercials. I'm not showing you right now because of copyright. But actually, oh, guys, this is hilarious. Okay, I'm going to tune in really quick. Okay, so there's a pharmaceutical drug commercial going on. It's an old guy riding a bike. I thought it was Biden for a second. And apparently the drug is Prevagen, which is supposed to improve memory. So uh, that, that's, 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 pretty, that's pretty funny. All right, anyways, uh, let's read some of the regular chat here. Anyways, uh, do, 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 half the questions Newsom wouldn't answer. Ex virtually none of the questions Newsom has answered, right? And when he does, he doesn't talk about his own record as governor. Has he named a single thing he's actually done besides, I guess, a little bit in terms of the guns as governor? Most of the time, he just turns around and tries to say, oh, but, but this or but that. He deflects to everything. He deflects to Trump, to January 6th, to Joe Biden. Very little talk about what, you know, he's actually done as the governor. And yeah, like I said, you're kind of seeing him for what he is, which is just a slimy politician. He thinks because he's good looking and comes off as charismatic that he can get away with it. But what you're seeing tonight is that that's really all a ruse. He's not that charismatic and... I, I just, I don't think he's done a good job tonight. I, I'm not impressed with him at all. Honestly, he's underperformed even my expectations. He's un like, I thought Newsom would be a lot more formidable of an opponent than this because I thought the fact that Newsom went in this so confident seemed to suggest, hey, he had something up his sleeve, right? But no, he has nothing up his sleeve. He's just trying to kind of bring the national culture war liberal arguments into this. He has no record as governor. He's not actually going to answer the questions. And... That that seems very obvious, right? So, uh, you know. The Democrats watching this, I don't know. You know, they have a different brain. They might be like, oh, he said Trump is bad. Let's run him over Biden. I, I don't know. But in terms of this guy's ability to supposedly be such a invincible political force, I, I think that's being proven as fraudulent right now. Again, he's having one of the least charismatic guys in the Republican field make him look stupid. And make him look, like, inarticulate. But anyways, all right, let's get back to this. Here you go. We're once again live. The debate, we continue with Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida, Governor Gavin Newsom of the state of California. Gentlemen, let's turn to the issue of parental rights. Now, in March of last year, Governor DeSantis, as you know, you signed the Parental Rights in Education Bill. And let me read from it. It says, classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in according with state standards. Critics have called the bill, quote, homophobic. They, this is the one they branded the don't say gay bill. I ask you, Governor DeSantis, in especially the lower grades, should schools, and maybe all grades, should schools be focusing on reading, writing, math, science, history, computers, and maybe leaving values, considering parents might have different values than teachers at school, um, to the parents, to religious institutions, uh, or is it the role of the school? What is the role? The role of the school is to educate kids, not indoctrinate kids. It's not to impose an agenda, it's to do the basics. And what we've said in Florida is it's inappropriate to tell a kindergartner uh, that their gender is a choice. It's inappropriate to tell a second grader that they may have been born in the wrong body. Now, California has that. Uh, they want to have that injected into the elementary school. My wife and I have a seven, yep. five and a three year old. Uh, we don't think that that's appropriate. And I know most parents do not think it's appropriate. Uh, it's also important True. to respect parental rights to know what curriculum is being used in the classroom and everything should be age appropriate. I actually have something that I brought that some parents have objected to. So this is a book that's in some of the schools in California, Florida, this is not consistent with our standards, called Gender Queer. I, it's, some of it's blacked out. You would not probably be able to put this on air. This is pornography, it's cartoons, it's aimed at yep. children uh, and it's wrong. So this should not be in schools. Uh, when people like on the left say that somehow you're banning books by removing this from a young kid's classroom. No, this is not age appropriate. And so we're going to stand for the rights of parents. I think we need to do that nationwide. I don't think you can have a situation where some states just trample on the rights of parents. Parents have a fundamental right to direct the education and upbringing of their kids. I, I mean, by the way, you've been on a banning bench. 1,406 books have been banned just last year under Ron DeSantis' leadership. 
I love that he keeps pulling this out. I've seen this. He's been doing this all over the campaign trail. What's wrong with Tony Morrison's books? It's not banned. What's wrong? It's not true. It's not. What's wrong with Amanda Gorman's? It's not banned. And the poetry. It's 1,406. False narratives. 1,406 books narratives. have been banned on your banning binge in the state of Florida. As it relates to parental rights, come on, California, it's in our Constitution, parental engagement. It's called the LCFF process. We actually require parental engagement on curriculum development. And we don't, complete lie, we don't require K through third grade sexual education. That doesn't happen until middle school. What you're doing is using education and as in middle a school, it's perverted cultural and... purge. And you know what? With all due respect, you know, I remember in the 1970s, in the 1970s, we had a bill called the Briggs Initiative. And there was a guy by the name of Ronald Reagan, so offended by the Briggs Initiative, which was the original don't say gay bill. In that case, it was not allowing teachers that happened to be gay to teach. And Reagan had the courage to stand up. And he said, you can't catch gay like you can measles. I don't like the way you demean people. I don't like the way you demean the LGBTQ community. I don't like the way you demean <laughs> and humiliate people what? you disagree with, Ron. I really find You're this mean. fundamentally offensive. And this is a I'm core value that distinguishes the values of my state and, frankly, the vast majority of Americans against the weaponization of education. Right. How You're mean, bro. I have, I have a follow-up question for you, though. Um, and by the way, first governor, yes or no? Is are the book banning issues? Is that not a state issue? Is that a state issue or a local it's issue? Local, and, he, and he's okay. Lying. That's that, all that, I want to know. Home book wasn't but there. Let me, that here's was the not, question okay, I have. Yeah. Let me, here's books the question have I have for you, uh, Governor Newsom. You're not nice. Um, <laughs> some of the books you're talking about. One is called. The governor just brought it up. It's called Gender Queer, a memoir. Explicit pornographic book showing sex acts. Another, Flamer, graphic book about young boys performing sex acts at summer camp. Uh, this book is gay, a book containing instructions on the ins and outs of gay sexuality. Let me finish. Uh, let's talk about it, a book that contains graphic descriptions about how to masturbate for males and females. My question to you, Governor Newsom, those books, do you believe that's appropriate for school districts to yeah, teach answer kids? the question. Yes or no? Not, come on. Those are not, it's not part of the curriculum. They're not Excuse teaching those kids. Are the, that, yes, it is. That, that was, those a, are books that were in school. Hold on. Hold on. The bottom line is you are on a book-banning binge, your state. Deflection. 1,406 books. 3,362 in this country. You didn't answer. Florida's what about leading, those no, books? <laughs> that's not. We don't provide for K through third grade education, that kind of curriculum. It's just made up. These guys make it up. It's part of this cultural purge. Should it it's be? It's just a you, made what grade, up What grade would it be what acceptable? I find, but what I find what offensive, Sean and Ron, what I find offensive is the a very significant number of these books happen to be LGBTQ books. A significant number of these books you think it's happen appropriate to be around African Americans. Do you think it's appropriate in I told you, we don't teach in that. We don't teach that. We have sex education in middle schools and high schools where it's appropriate. This is a ginned up, made up issue to divide this country. You talk about dividing this country. This is part of the culture war, the weaponization of grievance. This is part okay. using education. In California, the school's not science. allowed to tell parents if their kid is being transgender. We're get to education He's criminalizing next. teachers so and criminalizing librarians. I would bring that up. The schools to impose. Uh, a liberal agenda, social justice. They have this ethnic studies where they're dividing people. That's what they're doing. But let me just say something about parents' rights, because he Body. says California respects parents' rights. This is rich. He's been telling a lot of whoppers tonight. This may be the biggest. In California, <laughs> if you're a, a parent in Iowa or New Hampshire or South Carolina, <laughs> your minor whopper, child whopper, whopper, whopper. can go to California without your knowledge or without your consent and get hormone therapy, puberty blockers, and a Correct. sex change operation yeah all without you knowing or yep. consenting. How in the heck is that well, you know what? honoring parents' rights when you're bringing people from out of state to go around their parents' backs and getting yes. life-altering surgeries? That yep. is radical. That you know, is Ron, extreme. These kids that is an assault on live. parents' rights. You know what? Ron, it's not this for is, you to decide. These, it's for the parents to decide. You know what? And the these parents do not want, want their kids to survive. going to these this, other honestly, things. Let these me go kids to a follow up. Let me, let me stay on a follow up. Let's turn to, to the issue of Where's education. And let he won with that last line. Decency of taking, ripping somebody away. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Nobody can. And now Newsom is just saying he's mean. That is wrong. That is wrong. All right. That should not stand in this country. Let us turn, gentlemen, if I may, to the issue of education. Uh, here is public school spending per K through 12 students, according to the education data 
uh, initiative from the U.S. Census Bureau and National Center for Education. Florida spends nearly $12,000 per student, while California spends over $16,000. Florida is ranked number one by U.S. News and World Report uh, in terms of state education rankings. California ranks 20th. Governor Newsom, what is your explanation? You spend more money and they have better results in Florida. Why? I told you what I'm doing in public education. We created a brand new grade pre-K for all. We're doing after school and summer school for all. We're reimagining the school day, not just the school year. We just provided 3.4 million of our students upwards of $2 billion for child savings accounts and the opportunity to start businesses when they graduate. We have one of the best records under COVID, during COVID. And again, you didn't answer to the fact you had more learning loss. Ron DeSantis had more learning loss during COVID. Fourth grade reading, fourth grade math, eighth grade reading, eighth grade math. We outperformed you in every, it's a fact during COVID in every one of those categories. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to get all the politifacts tonight because, Ron, you keep denying some basic fundamental facts on health, wealth, and education. We outperformed you during COVID. You and talk you're about a mean things guy, to apologize. You, know? you apologize for your COVID record. He's you were with mean. Fauci. You aligned with vaccines. You aligned with CDC guidelines until you didn't. And right. tens of thousands of people Actually, died. Let's return our focus to education. Well, we, we, when we opened the schools, we bucked all of those people June of 2020. He kept the schools closed for a long time, uh, and that had devastating impacts. And why? True. What Gavin Newsom does in California is kowtow to the teachers' union. Whatever they tell him to do, he does. He will never balk the True. teachers' union. That's why the kids were locked out of school for so long. Joe Biden I is in there. the pocket of the teachers' union, and so is Kamala Harris. That's why they and fought by the way, school it's not openings Kamala when, Harris. when he Shame came in you. there. It's when they had Harris, that in Ron, there. It's Kamala Are you came serious? In the office, Madam and he Vice brought in President teachers' to you. union no. to be able to do Stop all these me. different things to try to keep the schools closed. <laughs> So the Democratic Party, the far left in this country, they are owned lock, stock and barrel by the teachers union. I beat the teachers union in Florida to get the schools open first in the country during COVID. Also to do universal school choice. Every parent in Florida has a right to send their kid to the school of their choice. We're winning these fights. California is bending the knee to the union because they control the politicians. Right, let's move on. on. A topic that will seemingly play a idiot. very large role in the future elections, and it's the issue of abortion. Yes. I have a question okay, for both of you. I'll ask you if, to please respect the individual's right to answer I can't believe he did that. Uh, and it's that is Kamala. Governor DeSantis. Um, I think it's actually your turn, Governor uh, Newsom, if you don't mind. <laughs> All good. Most medical professionals what a, what believe a, a baby ball. is viable outside of a mother's womb by between 24 and 26 weeks. That is the general scientific consensus. It changes. There are some variations on it. Abortion is legal in your state, quote, up to viability, is my understanding, unless the mother's health is in danger. Um, I'd like to get you on the record. You've been unwilling to answer this question. Do you, should there be any restrictions on the issue of abortion that you support at all because funding in California, you have allocated in your budget $265 million for abortion last year alone. My question, very specific, do you support any restrictions at all on abortion, especially in months 7, 8, and 9, past viability? I'm going to answer that question, but let's talk about the issue of abortion. Let's talk about the issue of abortion. No, you're not going to answer it. I'm going to answer that question. You're, no, you're not. People, <laughs> but I think this is important, and it bears repeating. <laughs> Ron DeSantis has signed the most extreme anti-abortion bills in America. He signed a bill banning any exceptions for rape and incest. And then he said it didn't go far enough and decided to sign a six-week ban before women even know they're pregnant, Ron, before women can even access a doctor's appointment. So extreme is your ban that criminalizes women and criminalize his doctor that even Donald Trump said it was too extreme. On the issue of the extreme exception that you highlight as it relates to the issue of later term abortion, it's almost always because of a fetal anomaly, the life of the mother. And in those rare cases, I trust, and answer your question, I trust the mother and her doctor to make that decision. So in other words, I want to be clear on this. If a woman and her doctor, for any reason, 
Not for any reason. No, 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 no. It's no, extremely no. I'm asking, rare. Sh should there this be? This is a canard. I know where you guys are going, Sean. You're even. So he's not going to answer the question again. Issue, I, and I, I watch your. I watch this your, is where you guys have I'm to asking, go to cover for the should, extreme should there anti abortion be, agenda of Ron DeSantis. Should there be? Hurt your would you support a ban on abortion in seventh, eighth, or ninth month for, if, the, the if, if the mother's life is, is not in jeopardy? It is extreme. Extreme exception. People aren't going on and having abortions. Should it be illegal unless then? something if devastating it's rare, has happened? Should it be it illegal? Should be up to the mother and her doctor and her conscience. And it so almost the answer is always, no restriction. I, I've already answered it, and I'll, and no I'll just reinforce it. To cover okay. up again, no, hold on. For the most extreme abortion ban in the country, I have a simple question though. This is important. No, 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 will no. I'm asking the question. Ron DeSantis, will you or will you not sign a six-week ban okay. in the unlikely uh, case? Let, you let me, I'm curious States. to see how he answers. Let's talk about national ban. Let's talk about your you state. Answer that. He's you had, saved you had 15 on that weeks. Fundamental question. Uh, you had a 15-week rule in, in California. You reduced it to six. Uh, my question is this. Uh, what was your thinking behind it? Was it for religious reasons? Was it for uh, scientific reasons? What was the reason for you um, from going from 15 weeks to six weeks? Well, I believe in a culture of life. I think we're better off when everybody counts, when everybody has an opportunity to do well. Uh, and that bill uh, attaches when there's a, a detectable heartbeat. Uh, for, for the child. And some states have done that. Some states have done others. Some states have done uh, later. And obviously, they have a, a right to do that. Uh, but I think about one of our Floridians, a lady named Penny Hopper. Uh, she actually survived a late-term abortion uh, back in the day. And, th and they left her on the, on the, uh, the table there to, to basically wither away. Her grandmother came, saved her, brought her to a, brought her to a hospital, brought her saved her and, and she ended up living a, living a good life. So, so she counts and she matters. And I think that what the position that we have from the modern good left, question. including in California, is that they will take your tax dollars and they will fund abortion all the way to the moment of birth. He's wrong when he says the, the later terms are all because of this. 88% past 15 weeks are, in fact, elective uh, from, from the Florida data. He doesn't keep data there. But that is really extreme to take your tax dollars uh, and to do this all the way up uh, to the moment of birth. He didn't answer your question about any type of protections at all uh, for a baby that has a beating heart, that can feel pain, that is viable. Right. Let me, let me, but, but, but he, hold on. Respectfully, this is a, a, an important conversation. Will you or will you not support a national ban? Why didn't you, why didn't you, you answer you or will you question? not support why didn't a you national support? ban if why? it lands on your desk? You couldn't answer that in any other context. Okay, the answer gentlemen, tonight, it's a we're simple moving yes, on no. to By the, the next way, issue. Hey, no, Sean, not a you next issue. You never gave a week. The American people should know this. I'll answer it for Ron DeSantis. He can't answer it. He will sign that extreme okay, six-week Okay, let me move on. Ban. The American I, people should know that. I'm calling this the lightning round. It would be great if you guys uh, I'm not a potted plant here. Um, and I want to ask you, we all know that federal policy does have a huge impact on states. We know that. that I'm going to ask you draw, three simple I questions, say. and I just want one-word answers, okay, from well, three of you. Cause do we're, our best. Well, I'm we're just talking past break. each other. And the issue is right now Joe Biden is president. Yep. So uh, I would like both of you to give a grade to Joe Biden overall as president. Governor Newsom, hey. I'll give... A. An A, absolutely. Governor DeSantis a master failed, and a failure. Yeah. Okay. Now that's your now number two. Question. Are his policies <laughs> helping or hurting your individual states? Is it helping the state of Florida? The inflation is hurting our state big time. Okay, I'll give that Great. to Newsom. That was funny. Uh, fail. He failed. Yeah. He failed. <laughs> you, the guy just took twenty-eight million the dollars from the Science and, and Tech Act. Thank you, Joe Biden. Uh, it's absolutely accelerating our dominance in manufacturing, accelerating our revitalization. Okay, of that our was state. a simple the answer. answer. Is unequivocally. Lastly. Absolutely yes. Okay, I will ask. Thank you, Governor DeSantis. Um, I have played over and over again, and Governor Newsom, you have seen over and over again. Um, Joe Biden is experienced what I believe to be significant cognitive decline. And in other words, it's the toughest job in the world. Is Joe Biden experiencing this uh, cognitive decline? Is it a danger to the country? Do you find when he speaks, what is your reaction to it? Yes, he's in decline. Yes, it's a danger to the country. He has no business running for president. And, you know, Gavin Newsom agrees with that. He won't say that. But that's why he's running his shadow campaign. Uh, he should not be running. Uh, he is not up to the job. Uh, and it is dangerous for this country. Well, I'll take, I'll, I will take Joe Biden at 100 
versus Ron DeSantis any day of the week at any age. In fact, all but of the you folks think, you think on the campaign You think he's up to the job? You think he's 100 percent? I've been spending 100%? plenty of time with I mean, Again, no one believes that. No one believes that. By the way, results matter. Inflation now is down to 3.2 percent. Wages are up to 4.4 percent. The economy is booming. 5.2 percent GDP okay. growth in the last quarter. Those are facts you don't hear on Fox News. 14 million jobs, 10 times Let more than last Let me move on. That was a lightning round. Now, Biden, on March Biden 31st, Biden. 1968, President Lyndon B. Johnson famously said, I shall not seek and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. Now, despite being an incumbent president who is eligible to run for re-election, Governor Newsom, I've interviewed you twice on this issue. You say you are not running for president in 2024. In fact, you recently said, quote, you think that Vice President Harris is naturally the one lined up to run for president if Joe Biden were to bow out. Governor Newsom, tonight uh -huh. I ask you, will you make an sure. LBJ-like statement and Governor DeSantis, you say he's running a shadow campaign in your response. I would like you to answer that. Will you say unequivocally under no circumstances are you running? Correct. I've said, I don't know how many times I can say it. He's just making this stuff up about a shadow campaign. If, if Bottom the, line, if uh, at the DNC you convention obviously they are, come fool. and ask Biden, you, will you run, what will you say? Joe Biden will be our nominee in a matter of weeks. And in a matter of weeks, Sean, he'll be endorsing Donald Trump as a nominee for the Republican Party. If they come to you at the DNC well, and Joe is true. incapable of running and they <laughs> ask you, are you a hard no? But it's not even it's not even optional. He's doing fantastically. <laughs> I appreciate and respect the work the president's doing and the vice president's, the Biden-Harris campaign and team. So absolutely unequivocally, vice I president look forward Harris would be the to next continuing person. to support their efforts. President right. Biden will be oh. reelected. I mean, Donald Trump I think will what be he's saying, rejected. I think what he's saying should color every single thing. I mean, I've called him on a lot of the lies, but he says Joe Biden is 100 percent up to the job. Yep. You know that that's not true. Anybody that can look, he wants you to believe him over your own lying eyes. When he says the economy is so great, how great is it when you're going to the grocery store now? How great is it when you're trying to afford yeah. a home? How Again, are those interest no one rates believes it, you know? What about affording a new car? So we have to get real here. We have to understand that, that Biden is not a job. But here's, the, here's I think, the problem. Uh, what Biden would do, the people around him, they would look to California for the model to go forward in the next four years. That would accelerate the decline of this country. Yeah. Freedom is what works. <laughs> the failures need to be left in the dustbin of history. Yeah. Tell, 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 tell about freedom to women that you're trying to criminalize in your state. And All right. Oh, we're, shut we're up. We're retreating to old ground. <laughs> this years, notion of freedom. Gentlemen, Lord is not a state of freedom. Uh, one of the things I want to accomplish here is the policies that you both implement have a great impact on the citizens of your individual states. Um, for years, a gallon of gasoline, Governor Newsom, in California has been notably higher in your exactly. state it's than like in the state the of price. Florida. That's right. Here are the numbers, by the way, recent numbers. The average cost for a gallon of gas nationwide, just over $3.24 in Florida, $3.17 in LA, it's like $6. In California. It is a whopping $4.85. LA is in the sixes. Cents. So, Governor Sometimes Newsom, seven. I ask you, you've also sued big oil companies alleging right. executives have deceived the, the public about uh, the health of our planet, knowing that it's a polluter. Right. If your lawsuit is successful, that would likely mean higher gas prices, even higher gas prices for everybody. Here's my question, though. Could you name right now one source of energy that you can bring online in the next three to six months that would be as inexpensive for the people in this country as fossil fuels. Well, let me let me let me let me touch. Can you on, break, can you think of that? Energy? Let me touch on the. I'm going to get to your question, and then let me touch or the, the latter part of your question. Let me get to the first part of the question. Okay. You're absolutely right. Since the 1980s, Republican administrations, Democratic administrations, uh, have experienced under their. Uh, stewardship experienced higher gas prices in the state of California. We've been ripped off by big oil. We continue to be ripped off by big oil. Big oil now is met. <laughs> is a that new the reason foe, the gas that's prices the state are of high? California, the most aggressive anti gouging law in America. Well, it's More not working. Transparency being required than any time in America. And yes, well, it's not working. We're suing. We're suing the industry responsible for this climate crisis. By the way, it's the not same working. climate crisis that Ron DeSantis celebrated as human, human caused, 
who campaigned for a fracking ban, who campaigned to oppose offshore oil drilling, and then two days after he got elected, signed an executive order, by the way, Nikki Haley had you dead to right on this, Ron, signed an executive order doubling down, saying you're adamantly opposed to fracking, adamantly opposed to offshore oil drilling. You were celebrated by the Sierra Club for that action until you weren't. Once again, it shows the hypocrisy of Ron DeSantis. Now you're running away from climate change as things have gotten worse. Hurricanes, wildfires, droughts, and floods. $179 billion of weather-related related disasters. And he has no response except talking points All from right. Big Oil. Governor, well, now, that, was, uh, that, that was a, that was a mouthful. Uh, uh, again, just, just more lies. But here's the thing. <laughs> California is the only one that oil companies are gouging. Why aren't they doing that to Georgia or Florida or these other states that have lower gas prices? It's because of their policies. That's why people yes. are paying more there. Those what are Gavin those Newsom are the wants to and do, there's a, what there's a gas tax, too. What Biden wants to do nationally is government-dictated green energy policies. Uh, they want to Correct. kneecap uh, fossil fuels and reliable energy. We've already seen what's happening in California. They have rolling blackouts. He actually True. implemented a mandate to buy, to buy electric vehicles. So pretty soon in California, you're not going to be able to buy a normal car, only electric vehicles. And they also celebrated true. that as like a great thing. A couple days later, uh, there was a notice from the state government telling all EV owners, do not plug in your EV because they don't have enough grid capacity. So he also is true. walking his people into a big time disaster. Uh. What Biden wants to do is he wants to take the California model. He wants to impose that nationally. He wants to take away your ability ability to purchase the car that you want. He wants to kneecap reliable energy. And I, he wants to bring these rolling blackouts all across the United States of America. It doesn't work. It's going to cause huge problems. We have more energy here. We can be the dominant energy well, producer in the world. In Florida, and that's what we're going to do. And Flor 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 Florida Florida is not a big energy state. We have the Marcellus Shale. We have the West Texas. Hypocrisy. We have all of that. Just so let's do that. Hypocrisy. No forcing electric vehicles. we got to take Save a break. American automobile. Please. When we Fox. come back, we'll continue the great state, red state, blue state debate. More with Governor Ron DeSantis, more with Governor Gavin Newsom. As we continue, thank you for being with us from Alpharetta, Georgia. Okay, so here's my thing about this debate. And again, you know, I'm trying to look at this from the perspective not of a really partisan conservative like myself or a really partisan liberal. You know, who's really, I guess you're theoretically, although I don't know if they're even watching this to tell you the truth, but who you're theoretically trying to convince of anything is kind of the person in the center, perhaps, the independent, the average American, whatever you want to call it. And to me... DeSantis keeps, I mean, sorry, not DeSantis, Newsom keeps picking the worst hills to die on, right? Immigration. That's something like no American believes Biden is doing a good job at the border. And instead of trying to differentiate him, Newsom says, I'm going to defend Biden on the border. Biden's cognitive state. Again, most Americans, I would, I probably even most Democrats, to tell you the truth, do not think Joe Biden is in a good mental state. But what does Newsom do? He goes out and says, nope, Joe Biden's doing a great job in terms of you know, mental state. You can agree with the policies. But again, that's like a dumb hill to die on, right? I would even argue the education stuff. You look at why Glenn Youngkin flipped a blue state like Virginia. Democrats are not popular on that either. And what does Newsom do? He tries to pick the most liberal hill to die on in terms of that as well. You know, so... Also, crime. That's another one. Is probably crime. But now, on the flip side, in terms of like national attitudes, you could argue abortion for Republicans. Unfortunately, I don't like that it's that way, but it's true. Uh, is kind of that issue for sort of center of the road Americans, right? So you could argue maybe Newsom got in a little point there, but that's one part of the debate. The other, and, and by the way, I thought DeSantis even if he didn't do a fantastic job, did kind of a decent job of at least, you know, bouncing off those bullets a little bit. But I don't know why Newsom has chosen all those hills to die on. He just cho chose the worst ones. And I think as most people can see, he's not coming off as a talented, articulate guy, more so than he's just coming up as a sleazeball and a fraud that will just evades questions and does all that. But anyways, let's get here to these super chats. Not so classy for five Canadians says Newsom is not going to be on the table anymore as a Biden replacement. I think he blew up on the stage tonight. Thank you for the five Canadian. I mean, I agree. I'm not impressed with him at all. 
Um, now, I think he still is on the table as a number one because there's not anyone better. You know, like Kamala Harris wouldn't do better. Um, but he definitely did not raise his draft stock, in my opinion, overall tonight. Because he, frankly, even underperformed my expectations, truly. Uh, anyways, Sheeny Beanie for two says, Wah, Gavin probably. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I, I forgot to bring up. The whole, Ron, you lack compassion. You're not nice. Say her name correctly. I'm a white knight. Say Ka Kamala Harris's, sorry, Kamala Harris's name correctly. That's insulting. That was just stupid. Okay, that was just stupid. He looks stupid. It's not working. Uh, it, I don't know what that even is supposed to be. Uh, Sheeny Beanie for two says, didn't Gavin assist his mom in unaliving herself? I have no idea. I have no idea, Dia Sheeny. Um, Zachary for two says, why should there even be an exception for in dot 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 st Yeah, well, why, why should there even be incest in the first place? Uh, you know, true. Okay, uh, are we all caught up here on our Super Chats? I believe we are. Again, folks, if you would like to Super Chat, feel free to do so in the commercial breaks. And let me know. Actually, let's let's start up the poll here. Who do you think is winning? Um, let's see. Who is winning slash one? And we'll do the poll here. We'll do the poll here in the live chat. We'll say DeSantis and Newsom. You know, it's interesting. I think a lot of people are going to look at this and think, where the heck is this DeSantis on the campaign trail in terms of the presidency? And by the way, that's the one I think solid shot D Newsom does get in, which is your campaign is going horribly, which it is. I think it comes down to what he's meant to do, right? I think News I think DeSantis is a good governor and he, he does a good job defending his statewide record. But in terms of selling a national vision and running a national campaign, I think you see the difference in how good he is at one thing versus the other. That's probably what it's about. Uh, but anyways, all right, final parts of the debate. Let's tune back in here. Here we go. Uh, these are the numbers for the homeless population in each of your states. It is a big problem around the country. In the state of California, it is 172,000. In Florida, it is 26,000. Now, the per capita numbers are pretty much the same. For California, it is 44 per uh, 10,000 people, while Florida has 12 per 10,000 people. So, Governor DeSantis, uh, I ask you, why the disparity? What are the policies you are implementing that is different from that of California. California Leave a like, by the way. We've got 500 people. Policies. Gavin Newsom was uh, governor or uh, mayor of San Francisco. Yeah. He put out a 10-year plan like 20 years ago. He was going to end homelessness. Then a few years later, he had another plan. And now he says he's going to do, and it's only gotten worse. In the last 10 years in California, the homeless has gone up 45%. Why is he talking so fast? It's gone down in Florida 45%. Okay, no, the speed but is it's fine. caused a huge problem with quality of life in, in California. The people that flee always bring up this. They've really empowered lawlessness and drug use. And, you know, Gavin Newsom at one point tried to say that California was the freedom state. And I just kind of laugh like you're locking people down. You're doing all this. Uh, but then I thought about it. You know, California does have freedoms uh, that some people don't, uh, that other states don't. You have the freedom to defecate in public in California. You have the freedom to pitch a tent on Sunset Boulevard. You have the freedom to create a homeless encampment under a freeway and even light it on fire. You have the, the freedom to uh, have an open air drug market and use drugs. You have a freedom, if you're an illegal alien, to get all these taxpayer benefits. So, so those are freedoms. They're not the freedoms our founding fathers envisioned, but they have contributed to the destruction of the quality of life in California. And the results speak for themselves. People are leaving the state because they have failed in addressing the homeless population. Well, I love, the, I love the rant on freedom. I mean, here's a guy who's criminalizing teachers, criminalizing doctors, criminalizing librarians, and criminalizing women that seek their reproductive care. You're making it harder to vote. You're banning books. I mean, spare me this notion of freedom. Ask the folks at Disney about freedom and free enterprise. Ask the folks at the Special Olympics that you threatened to fine with 27 because they were discriminating dollars. against the athletes. Who goes you after those Special Olympians when it comes to the issue, Ron, of homelessness? That is wrong. That's being a liberal bully. You know, That's being a bully. Really? Attacked, they had Down syndrome and you wanted to discriminate against them. $27 million they were discriminating fine against Special Olympians. Because they were discriminating against the athletes. On the they issue wanted to of marginalize the athletes. Right. And you wanted the athletes <laughs> marginalized. That was wrong what you did. These are kids with Down syndrome the way, that just wanted to compete. I grew up and working you wanted to them, adoption you wanted them special kids. Special I've been Olympics. working with You're special Olympians all my life. You wanted How them dare to be, you wanted them dare to be you, ostracized. You threatened taught, to you find should talk special to Isabella from Florida. She got to participate because we stood up for her rights. This is the way you treat... 
the way, no, it's, hold on. It's your, it's your no, no, turn. let me say, I can handle that. I can handle it. I'm used to that. But you know what? You wanted her your not attacks to on the trans community, you your attack on the gay and lesbian community. Here we wrong. go again. You You're mean. You attack vulnerable communities. We, we you attack women. And we He's trying sure to be preachy end. again. Relax. I can handle it. I'm used to bully. You're nothing but a bully. You're bullied. I bully. understand that. Intimidating <laughs> and humiliating people. That's your calling Why card. Why did you want the and special way, Olympians not to be able to compete? How well is it going for you? Why did you want them not to be able to compete? How well is this Why campaign going? Why do you not want them to be He's able to compete? He's not going to let me talk, so I don't talk understand to the American why you would want to discriminate Again, against I'll remind you, the, the, the blueprint He wanted them the to be excluded from the Florida. special Olympics let me, let me, has put let me, Ron DeSantis 41 points down to Donald Trump as you try to get tough. I think this whole debate belongs in the special Olympics. The issue of homelessness has been an issue for decades, decades in the making in the state of California. I'm watching the Ever special since Olympics. we started shuttering down our mental health institutions back in the day, in Ronald Reagan's day. The difference is I'm the first governor in California history to take this head on. We are investing unprecedented resources, more accountability. We've gotten 68,000 people off the streets, close to 6,000 encampments we've gotten off the streets. We've also invested in unprecedented resources in reforming our behavioral health system. Ron has literally the worst mental health system in America, forgive me, outside of, of Mississippi and Texas. And so with all due respect to being lectured on some of these topics, Ron DeSantis is not the one right. I'm going to be well, listening 30 to. 30-second response. Mean, You're, uh, well, I'm looking at total time. Governor DeSantis yeah, look, about this, two minutes. This, 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 this is a map of San Francisco. <laughs> There's a lot of plots on that. You may be asking, what is that plotting? Well, this is an app where they plot the human feces that are found on the streets of San Francisco. And you see how almost the whole thing is covered because that is what has happened in one of the previous greatest cities this country's ever had. Human feces is now a, a fact of life, except when a communist dictator comes to town. Then they cleaned up the streets. They lined the streets with Chinese flags. They didn't put American flags there. That's what this debate there. has been. They it's cleaned been human everything feces. up. So they're that's willing to do it for a communist dictator, so but they're not willing to do it for their own people. Just, I want to get in with such, the limited time we have left. I want to get there are two All very right. important that's issues we have not hit. After the Hamas terror attacks on October the 7th, we have seen what is what does this have to do with red state versus blue state of virulent hatred, anti-Semitism around the world in the right. halls of our Congress on American streets on college campuses last month outside in Sydney uh, Opera House in Australia. We've seen it all over Europe, but in Australia, anti-Israeli protesters. Literally, in this day and age, chanting, gas the Jews, mm -hmm. F the Jews. Mm -hmm. In American cities, we have protesters calling for global Islamic war and demanding that Israel be wiped off the map, or in the words of Congresswoman Tlaib, from the river to the sea. Israel, meanwhile, is vowing to eradicate the terrorist group Hamas. But according to a report in the New York Times this week, U.S. officials this has very have little warned to do Israel with state that they politics. need more uh, to fight more surgically in Gaza. Governor Newsom, 30 seconds for you. We have to cut back on time. All right. how, do, how can Israel win the war against this, this, this terrorist This is not related to California versus Florida. surgical strikes and directions well, from, the, from the Joe Biden. Israel. I visited Israel. I met with families, hostages. I saw videos of children being killed in front of their parents, parents being killed in front of their children. Oh, yeah, they're I both running for president. Sorry, Chad, I, I forgot, hope. forgot. Uh, this is not complicated to me. This is a fight between good and evil. Hamas is a terrorist organization, and they need to be eliminated, not just for the people of Israel and Jews around the world, but for the Palestinians themselves. But when it comes to the issue of anti-Semitism, you just mentioned a lot of things that have been occurring on Ron DeSantis's watch. He said nothing. You're calling Mass him anti-Semitic? Marching. I'm oh, saying what ha he countenanced anti-Semitism, oh, and now he's finally talking a big game ever since October right, 7th. For the How sake about of, the mass for man for marching the sake the street, of fairness of Jews time, the rope. gentlemen? You said nothing. Governor well, DeSantis. Nothing on that, these um, issues. Hamas Look at the record. Governor DeSantis. Than a second Holocaust. They want to destroy Israel and wipe every single Jew uh, off the map. Uh, Israel has every right to defend itself to the hilt. Biden should not be kneecapping them in any way, shape, or form. And by the way, Biden stranded a lot of American citizens over there. We're trying to get home. So I did an executive order in Florida, and we sent planes over to Israel right in the aftermath of October 7th, and we saved over 700 Americans, mostly Floridians, but not all, uh, because Biden wouldn't do it. Finally, Biden started dumping people in Greece, and then this they were sending a bill to, to the, the Americans just to get to Greece. If you come to this country illegally, 
They will okay. pay to fly you all over the place. They'll put you up in hotel at no expense. But yet our own citizens fleeing a war zone, they're going to send you a bill. Joe Biden failed those people, and we stepped up and got right, it Let me done. ask you, you I want to turn to, turn to the anti-Semitism on time. your streets for years I want to turn to the issue, and gentlemen, of China. Um, I talk about this often. Intellectual property theft, unfair what trade practices. What does this practices. have to do with state? Uh, <laughs> the, China has been hostile to right, our whatever. fighter jets in international whatever. airspace, hostile to our Navy in international waterways. Uh, we know all about the China spy balloon that happened. Eight days right across the United States over military installations. I guess when you uh, understand the they're both Chinese, running for they have president. Nationals then. buying up thousands of acres of branch land, farmland, I guess it makes and sense. land near military installations. Their hostility towards Taiwan. Uh, they are, Governor DeSantis, our number one geopolitical foe. I don't see that the Biden administration has been tough with them. What would you do differently? Well, first, in Florida, we ban China from buying land in our state, because you're right. You don't want them buying farmland or land near military bases, so we acted. We also got the Confucius Institutes out of our universities. China should not be involved in our universities at all. Uh, what you need to do is you need to have hard power in the Indo-Pacific to deter China's ambitions. You need to take the economy and we need to decouple from China. We're dependent on them for so many things. And then finally, we need to get serious about their influence in this country. They shouldn't be able to buy farmland anywhere. I can tell you this. I would not go to China and grovel in front of Xi uh, like Gavin Newsom did. He says China's a partner uh, on climate change. China's adding two new coal plants every year. China's <laughs> laughing uh, at us. Hey, he cleaned with up what the streets, doing. though. So, yes, they're the Thank number you, one Xi. threat we face. Thank and you, we Chairman need to take Xi. It seriously, and Joe Biden is you not. You made San doing Francisco that. clean just, for once. a reminder. Uh, you know, it, it, I think it's a question some people are probably asking. I know Nikki Haley's campaign is asking when are you going to drop out and at least give Nikki Haley a shot to take down Donald Trump in this nomination? She laid you out. Please. You're a walking hypocrite. You what about, you're a walking you hypocrite what about China? on the issue of China. This is I'm the guy a... that was looking for direct foreign trade from China, was doing trade shows. That is false. Up an awesome, that's already been that's debunked. An you talk about true. the liberal fact checkers. Even the liberal fact checkers Ch uh, Donald did Trump that, himself so. today Please. called you Red Ron for Please. a reason, because of your complete hypocrisy. All right, we're almost uh, out again, of time. talking a big game. I confronted Xi Our... on the issue of fentanyl, Ron. I confronted them on human rights. Not on human rights, you didn't. I absolutely did with the foreign minister and the vice president and other leaders in China. You talk a big game. Meanwhile, we're you over done time. Except tweet Final out. question, uh, Governor DeSantis, you, we owe you about 90 seconds, but you get the last word as per the coin flip. What are you giving me? Five seconds? The vac what, would what mop the I floor get? with no, these two? I'll, I'll, do true. I'll be right, a little right, more generous right, than right, that. Um, true. Uh, look, it's been a very passionate debate tonight. Actually, it's been fun to be a part of. I, <laughs> I think the American people will decide. Um, Governing philosophies could not be more different. But let me ask you this, kind of a fun question. You, you both clearly love your states. Uh, you visited each other's state. Uh, Governor DeSantis, um, you can take as much time as you want. <laughs> you have an extra 90 seconds. What is your favorite thing about the state of California? And well, I'd give him five minutes for this. I oh, love go it. right ahead. That's a good question. Five, well, all right, we'll stay long. Uh, five minutes, when Governor. When I got orders as, yeah. a, as a Navy lieutenant, uh, to go to Naval Amphibious Base Coronado. I had not spent any real time in California in my life. Florida native, and I'm very proud of the state. Uh, but I got down there, uh, and that strand is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And then all up and down, just a tremendous coastline. I do believe California has more natural advantages than any state in the country, um, which is why when you have so many people leaving on net, you know, that's hard to do. Like, people don't want to leave there because it really is such a beautiful area. And, and I'm proud of the military installations crowded, that are though. there. I'm proud of what the what the Navy's been able to do uh, I will in conjunction uh, with the state. It was really important duty. Uh, it really helped forge me uh, as an individual and, and as an American. And so I'll always have very, very fond memories uh, of that nice strand down there in Southern California. I love that. I mean, what do you Reagan, no, what do you love? I don't know what you love Reagan about used to California. Call California Coast of Dreams. By the way, look, what do you I, love about Florida? What, what, what I love about your question is the comedy in the question, meaning, you know what? We all want to be loved. We need to be loved. We all want to be protected, respected, and connected. I think there is a unity. What are you frame talking here. about? Uh, you, you said it. <laughs> what? I mean, I, I, what the hell? Ron, I have no doubt. Ron DeSantis loves this country. I love this country. It's not about red versus blue. It's red, white, and blue. The United States of America. And I think we're Shut all better up. off. And we're all better off. And so I appreciate this Go back conversation. back to the Special Olympics. I appreciate you, Ron, being a family man. You've got three incredible kids. 
appreciate your wife, your sacrifice, and I appreciate your military service. But I also appreciate we do have fundamental differences about the fate and future of this country. And that's why I'm going to be working so hard to get Joe Biden and Kamala Harris reelected in 2024. You couldn't resist. You had to go right back to, to 2024. Uh, uh, all right, here's the last question. Would you do this again? Yeah, another question he didn't I, answer. I, Isn't well, that funny? Know, I hope we could do you know another half debating? hour. I got all night. Joe, Joe Biden Let's should show doing. up to a debate. That's why I want to show up to a debate. I have another 20 minutes, and I've got a well, lot I, of questions. I'm happy to. You want to stay? <laughs> Let's just do an extended hour. <laughs> we want, they will well, be I'm next year. Okay. Then it's been fun. I, I think it's been fun, and I think it's been more entertaining. I'm sorry to the guests that I've been invited. i got to take a break, though, in the meantime. Uh, we've got to pay some bills. It's not a cheap set we built no. for you all. Um, I hope you like it. Um, courtesy of your favorite channel, Fox News, and you do admit you walk, watch <laughs> often. We'll take a break. They've agreed to stay. Well, that's, uh, I They're guess, staying? a debate on the fly. We'll continue on the other side and later have what? live post-debate coverage. It's overtime. We are in Alpharetta, Georgia, the great red state, blue state. All right, Chad, apparently we're getting overtime because they they both agreed to stay longer. It was supposed to only go 90 minutes. Truthfully, I'm actually very upset about that. Uh, I was ready for this to be done. You know, the first 30 or so minutes were good. I think now it's just going off the rails. Not a lot is being accomplished. Not a lot. Not a lot's really interesting to tell you. I mean, what are they going to ask about next? Russia? Is that the next question? Whoa. Hey, governors, can you please talk about Russia and Ukraine in a debate about state politics? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Like, I, I really think the point has been made. I don't think we need overtime, but, you know, we're, we were here. We might as well. I mean, I, what am I going to do? Cut off the feed? So I guess chat. Uh, apparently they're going longer. I don't know how much longer. I'd have to assume till 11. I don't, are, are these going to do a five-hour debate? It would be kind of funny, though. That would be kind of funny. But yeah, I, 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 effectively, this thing is done. I don't know what else there is to talk about, truthfully. They've covered most of the issues. But uh, I, guess, I guess they're going to be talking about the Special Olympics while they're participating in the Special Olympics in the next segment, apparently. I have no idea, but let's get to our Super Chats. Diamond Hands for $2.01 says, Newsom is... I'm not going to read that. that, that, that this, that's going to get clipped out of context, okay? But, but yes, it is true. It is true. Newsom is indeed... Uh, things are happening on live TV, okay? <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the two. But yeah, apparently we're going through the overtime period. I, I don't know how this works. Is it sudden death? Hey, loser... Loser c cannot run for president since they're both basically running for president. The loser has to be disqualified from the presidential race. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I don't have much else to say because like I said, I think it just kind of went off the rails at the end. I did think it was funny. There's yet another question that Newsom wouldn't answer. Even the easy one that has no political implications. The question of say one thing about the state of nice thing about the state of Florida. Like, that's the easiest question in the world. Oh, I like the beaches. I like the weather. I like Daytona or Miami or whatever. <laughs> and it is quite, it is quite funny, right, chat? He couldn't even, he, even that, he managed to somehow dodge that question. That kind of sums up the night, I guess, in many ways. Have they asked anything about Maui? I mean, they've not. I guess that could be one thing. Um, but he didn't answer what he liked most about Florida and brought up Biden in 2024. Like, you can't make that up. You cannot make that up. But anyways, while we're sitting here and just waiting for the commercial break to end, I do want to point out something I've noticed here on the side from Fox News. Do you guys see this headline here? It says, giant crocodile called Croczilla spotted in the Florida Everglades. At this point, I'm frankly more interested in that than this debate, okay? Because I, I was getting worn out. I was ready to just end the end the stream and, and just do a quick review and stuff. But apparently we're going further. But this interest... I don't know about you guys. This interests me more than the, the debate at this point. Giant crocodile called Croczilla. For people who don't know, there are actually crocodiles in the state of Florida. We do have uh, American crocodiles. Although that does not look like an American crocodile. Chat, is that an American crocodile? That looks like a Nile crocodile. Are we sure that is an American crocodile? Or is, is that an invasive Nile crocodile we have in the Everglades? Because we used to have those um, for quite a bit. And then they said they removed them all. Now, the Burmese pythons are a different story. The Burmese pythons are running crazy. But um, that's cra that doesn't look like an American alligator. 
for people who don't know why I'm geeking out, I'm, I'm like obsessed with crocodilians. Okay, that's my weird thing I like. And it's funny because it just started with the Florida thing. Once I knew I was moving to Florida, I don't know what it is. I just, I just became obsessed with this. So that's crazy. It doesn't even look that big though. I mean, it looks big, but it's not. Okay, are we back yet? I'm literally stalling time by looking at this crocodile. Chat, I'm so, you know, you people would get mad at me, but you don't know how tempted I am to click on the article right now and turn off the debate. But anyways, all right, enough about giant crocodiles. Let's get back to this. They are once again back live, and let me turn on the volume. Agreement. Uh, both candidates had other commitments, and they realized afterwards they couldn't stay longer, uh, but we appreciate them all being here tonight. Okay, what did you think about it? All right, you know what, thank, winner, thank God, loser, thank winners, God. Losers. <laughs> I didn't want anyway, to listen to more of that. Host of the five and former Democratic no, all right, Harold all right. So, that, so then that is the end of the debate, Chad. That is the end of the debate. I mean, I've summarized my thoughts, but for people just tuning in, we have just ended the Gavin Newsom Ron DeSantis debate. Um, frankly, the entire last hour was the Special Olympics, and if you're wondering why I keep bringing up the Special Olympics, it's because Ron was like attacking this, uh, Newsom for banning the special olympics or i don't know something like that um but overall thoughts here desantis handled that much better than he's handled any of the presidential debates much much better and i think here you know i'm trying to put my finger on it as i've been watching it i think here's the reason why is that what ron desantis is good at as everyone knows and few would dispute at least dispute in good faith is being a governor Right? He's a very good governor. He's kind of effective legislator at the state level, at least. Would it translate to the national level? That's a debate. But in terms of his record, very good at the state level. I think he's good at selling a record and results that he's already done, but he's not good at selling a vision, right? And when you're running for president, especially as a non-incumbent candidate, you have to, to, to be able to sell a vision. And I think that's Ron DeSantis' problem. Is everyone loves him as governor, and he's and as you saw in the debate tonight, when it comes to just defending his record as governor, he's very strong. But as you see, when he fail tries and fails to run a presidential campaign, he's not very good at kind of selling the forward vision. And I don't think this is the only example of that. I think back to his first run as governor, right? When he because this time around, when he had to run for re-election and he was running off of a proven record, again, did very well, won by what was it, 17, 18 points or something like that. But if you remember back to the first time around in 2018, when Ron DeSantis did not have a record to run on, he was a very weak candidate. Okay, he almost lost that election. Trump had to come in and do some rallies to bail him out. Why is that? Because, and what was the criticism of DeSantis in 2018? The same things you're hearing in the 2024 presidential race, which is like, he's not good at running a campaign in terms of selling that vision, and that's why it's failing at the presidential level. But I think what you see tonight is, you know, you see Governor DeSantis, not presidential candidate DeSantis. And those are like two different things. Okay, so that's on the DeSantis side, why I thought he did very well. It's not very hard. It's not a very hard issue to debate. By most metrics, Florida's doing better than California, and everyone knows that. Now let's talk about Newsom, because I think more than Ron DeSantis, I guess, like, quote-unquote, doing a good job, I think the biggest takeaway and what surprised me the most was sort of an underperformance by Newsom, okay? Because you are sold this lie, I think, on both right-wing and left-wing media and it's largely because Newsom has run this sort of media campaign for the past year or so, because he's clearly preparing to at least run for president if they take Biden out somehow, is that he's a good liberal debater, right? He's one of the articulate liberals and all that stuff, and he has charisma. And don't get me wrong, you know, he definitely has the looks going for him and stuff like that. But in terms of actually debating tonight, I thought Newsom massively underperformed and frankly flopped in many ways, right? He did not seem like that invincible force of charisma and the liberal side of facts and logic that he's been sold and made out to be, okay? He evaded most of the questions, did a very bad job of that. I think it was very clear. And if you knew the prime example, even the last question that's just supposed to be the for fun question, he did not even answer that. Really sums it up, right? So Newsom, sl sleazeball, slimeball, evades most of the questions. And then I thought on the positions he took, okay, the few times he took a position, it was to die on a hill 
that again, if we're talking about like winning over the center, was unelectable and like bad with American people. Because every chance he got, instead of talking about his own record as governor of California, which in fairness, he doesn't have much to talk about there, and that's part, probably part of the point. But Newsom went out on a limb to defend Biden. And that to me was a little bit baffling. I think it was a stupid move, frankly. Because if there's one thing most Americans are united on, even if they agree with Biden's policies because they're liberal, is that A, Biden is not really all there, right? He's kind of, you know, you know the story. And yet what did Gavin Newsom go out there and say? He says, Biden is mentally fit and he's doing a good job. And then what did, he, what did he do on the point of inflation, which is something most people feel, everyone feels in this country? He basically denied that inflation was real, right? And he said, Biden is handling inflation really good. And that's another point I was like, what person in America outside, again, you're like 20, 30% pure liberal hacks actually believe that? And, you know, there, there are, there's an appeal you can make for the Democrats. Oh, don't you care about abortion and, like, minorities and stuff like that? Like, but I don't think dying on the hill that inflation isn't real or Biden is handling inflation well was a smart move by Newsom at all. I think he just looks stupid. And by the way, he did not have to do that, right? He did not have to do that because he's the governor here. There's no reason he has to defend Biden. He's clearly doing all of this media in case he has to replace Biden. So he did not have to do that. Instead, he, yet he chose to do that. Same thing on the immigration issue. He went out on a limb and said, Joe Biden is doing a good job at the border. Again, few people really believe that, right? And it's not a hill that Newsom had to die on. But I guess, of course, when you consider as governor, he has very little to talk about himself. Maybe spending all that time defending Biden made a little bit of sense. But yeah, long story short, again, folks, I thought Newsom really underperformed. Okay. Now, is he still the obvious favorite to replace Biden if they choose to do that? I would say yes. Because who else do Democrats have? You know? Maybe you sub in Gretchen Whitmer or something last minute, although I, I, I wonder how likable she is as well. Maybe a Josh Shapiro. Honestly, Josh Shapiro might be a stronger replacement than either of them, but also he's not very nationally recognized, right? But then on the flip side, Newsom is definitely still miles ahead in terms of charisma and likability than Kamala Harris. Or sorry, Kamala Harris. Another dumb thing that Newsom did trying to basically say, and he said it in this tone of voice too. He's like, Ron, where's your compassion? Ron, why are you putting down the Madam President of the... Like, that was just cringe. That was just completely cringe. Uh, but yeah, was not impressed by Newsom at all. That's, that's the biggest surprising takeaway for me is, is the fact that Newsom really flopped he really embarrassed himself and you know that's pretty much my current thoughts on it i'm gonna watch it back one more time and then maybe do a review video either later tonight or early tomorrow morning uh but yeah long story short desantis did a good job in the debate overall still not gonna make a difference it's not gonna i don't think it's gonna change his campaign presidentially very much he might get a brief spike up but again you know, if anything were to change, it would still have to take him, like, running a competent campaign, and I don't think at this point he's capable of doing that, especially the turnaround time needed. But I thought, you know, in terms of, because tonight was more Governor DeSantis than presidential candidate DeSantis. Governor DeSantis is very good. There's a reason why he was popular, you know. But on the flip side of Newsom, not impressed. Not impressed at all. But with that said, folks... Um, let's do super chats and read chat here for about 10 or so minutes, and then we will call it a night around 11 p.m. And while we're doing that, let me order my dinner because I have not eaten. So, and I don't have food either in the house, unfortunately. So, uh, I'm going to do that real quick and let me see if we got any super chats. So folks, we are now open to our super chats, thoughts on the debate, anything you got to say. Last call here. We're going live for about 10 minutes. Would love to hear your thoughts, but I take a look right now at the poll in the live chat. 91% said DeSantis won and only 9% said it went to Newsom. Um, I thought the best lines that Newsom had were the ones calling out the fact that Ron's campaign 
for the presidential race has failed because you know that 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 that's probably the best thing he had in terms of arguments. Because besides that, the argument that Biden was good, not a winning argument, and the argument that California was doing good. Well, he did he I thought he barely even attempted to make that, which was interesting. He he barely attempted to even really defend California, I thought, on a very high level. Uh so you know. Again, I'm gonna kinda go over it and maybe do a review video on it to sum it all up. But all right, with that said, we do have 500 people currently watching. So let me say, be sure to leave a like on the stream. And if this is your first time tuning into our live streams, be sure to subscribe if you are not already. And uh, be sure to tune into the future streams because we'll be starting next week. We got the podcast studio. You know, we're gonna have some fun with it. So I uh, hope to see you back on our future streams here, folks. And while you're at it, let's get the stream to 300 likes. While we have 519 people viewing, Viewership is definitely better than I thought it would be. So credit to uh, credit to you guys and credit, I guess, to the to the debate itself, because I really thought this would not be as watched as much as it was. But, you know, clearly where people were entertained and you certainly love to see it. Um, but anyways, let's see. Pussycat bot says, I like DeSantis, but can't get over him flipping on never running against Trump. Well, yeah, it, it, like I said. If you can separate Governor DeSantis from presidential candidate DeSantis, which tonight he was able to do, then you're kind of reminded of why people like the guy. And I thought you saw that tonight, you know? But then when you relate it back to the fact that, again, he is good at running on results, right? If he, were, if he somehow became the president and he were running as an incumbent president, I think much like 2022 you'd be pretty confident in that. But the DeSantis' problem, I once again reiterate, is he's good at selling a proven track record, but something like a presidential d campaign where you have to sell a vision when you're not the incumbent, he can't sell the vision, he can't sell the dream. That's what Patrick Bet David says about him a lot, is sell the dream. That's the phraseology he uses. I will steal it here, right? And I think that's the same reason why in 2022, when he had results to run on, dominated, but in 2018 when he was he he had to sell a vision he couldn't do it he couldn't do it he barely won and he only won because trump had to come and bail him out and that's a fact okay people can rewrite that history that's a fact without trump coming in and doing those rallies and pushing so hard for him ron DeSantis would have lost to andrew gillum and he, he still almost did right and so i think that kind of demonstrates the the the, the deal there with DeSantis and and what his shortcoming is which is he can sell results and when he's running off of the back of them, it's very easy. But uh, but he, like I said, he like Patrick Bet David says, he can't sell the dream. That's his problem. But you know, when it came tonight to selling the results, because it was a statewide debate, he was good at doing it. So again, folks, last call here for super chats. We're gonna end the stream here in about five minutes. But let's take a look. Bruh, 354 people can vote on the poll, but only 182 can like. This is so true. Everyone, leave a like on the stream. How do we have 388 now people voting? Only 241 likes. What are we doing? Let's get those numbers up. Go leave a like on the stream, ladies and gentlemen. But let's see here. Frank Lopez says, people were talking about the safety of the country. We're talking about the safety of our children. We don't have time to be playing around on who's more charismatic. We have to choose the right one. Well, I understand that argument, but I I'm, 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 ex I'm just, I'm explaining to you why DeSantis has been so non-competitive in this primary, besides the fact that Trump is a tr uh, still a chosen entity, a proven entity that people like, Okay which is that if Trump was vulnerable, which I do think Trump has his vulnerabilities, DeSantis has not done a good job at kind of either exposing them and then also selling a truly alternative vision. So you can get mad at me saying, well, you know, politics and electoral politics shouldn't be about charisma. It should be about facts and logic. I mean... I don't even think you're entirely wrong there, but that's the reality of politics and representative politics is charisma does matter. Selling a vision and selling a dream does matter. And, you know, that that's that that's why Ronald Reagan won in 1980, but Barry Goldwater did not win in 1964. The sad reality is, you know, you may disagree with it. And if anything, I think that's a case against democracy. That's a case against you know, letting the people choose or doing it the way we do. And I get that. Or, or high voter participation or who should we have voting on the system? 
And I'm willing to entertain those arguments. I talk about that all the time, but I'm just recognizing in the current system we have, where we have historically high voter turnout in a national system where a bunch of dumb people make these decisions, and not even just dumb, but in some ways, you know, irrational, I'll say, then something like charisma does matter. And selling a vision, selling a dream does matter. Any history of electoral politics will tell you this, right? This is why Reagan was so popular. This is why JFK won. You know, that's just how it goes. And I would also say, I think in a time of such like national dread, right, of a national pessimism, I think it especially matters too, because people are going to be looking for someone who's going to sell them the alternative, right? This is a big reason why, if you look back to 1980, why like the Reagan revolution was such a big thing and why, why, why that movement, whatever you think of it, lasted for several decades is because Reagan came along and sold that dream that people could attach to, you know? Bush would, let's say if it's H.W. Bush, H.W. Bush would have beaten Carter in 1980, but A, it wouldn't have been as by much and B, it would not have left as nearly a lasting legacy in American politics, because that's the reality, whether you like it or not. Um, anyways, not so classy for two Canadians, says Croczilla video now. Not so classy. Thank you so much for reminding me. I totally forgot about it. We need to look at, I promise that too. We need to look at this Croczilla. All right. Frankly, more uh, interesting than the debate we saw tonight. Okay, here we go. Giant crocodile Croczilla spotted in the Florida Everglades. Okay, so it was an American crocodile, but this was encountered in the Everglades National Park in Florida. For people unfamiliar, um, we do have crocodiles in the state of Florida. They only live in the southern parts, but we have the American crocodile in the very south of Florida. They mostly live in like, you know, Latin America and the Caribbean and stuff. But here you go. Check this out. If it'll play among all these pop-ups. Okay. Don't know. Um, I think there's one article that says how old he is. Maybe 15 years or so. That's clickbait. That he's not even that big. I am severely disappointed. That that is not even that big of a, cro a croczilla, really. Again. <sighs> 14 foot. Oh my god. Oh no! Whoa! So scary. That's lame. He don't even look that big. The alligator I saw crossing the golf course in uh, South Carolina was way bigger than that. That's a disappointment. As usual, we've been clickbaited by Fox News and we just gave them ad revenue because that, that crocodile was not that big. Okay? This is just normal. It's like normal size to me. I don't, I don't know what people are uh, going on about. Um, but anyways, thank you for the two Canadian. David K. Elkins for $5 says, thank you, Vince, for bringing this debate to us. Well, you are so welcome, David K. Elkins. I mean, I hope Fox doesn't copyright take down this afterwards. Because if you guys are not familiar, that is what they have been doing with the, their own presidential debates. Because you would think, right, a presidential debate, especially if you're reacting to the stream, it's in a public interest Generally, most networks, including NBC, by the way, let me point this out. Liberal networks like NBC, CNN, they're usually not copyright trolls about reacting to their content. Which, you know, I'm not endorsing or defending those networks. I'm just pointing out they, they understand that something like a Republican presidential debate is in the public interest and people reacting to or talking about it, you know, that should not be copyrighted. But uh, Fox News, very notably, they took down Tim Pool. They took down a lot of different people. They told the Daily Wire explicitly they would not allow reactions to their content from, from the debate um, because that's what they do. Like, they're, they're literally censoring creators trying to talk about the presidential debates on their own channel. And I know what people are going to say. They're going to say, but Vince, it's their legal right to do so. That's their intellectual property. I mean, first of all, that's debatable. Because I would argue if you're reacting to a stream, it technically falls within fair use, right? Reaction, commentary, content. You're repurposing the content in some way. Not to get super, like, legal and all that, you know, not nerdy nonsense. But that's the argument I would make. It's debatable in a court of law because the laws on fair use are very gray. So you can make a legal case one to the other. But 
I'm like, forget the legal argument for a second if whether or not they have the right to do so. You can legally do a lot of things that I don't think are ethical, okay? I don't think it's ethical for Fox News, and hopefully they don't do it to this. I mean, I'm, I'm praying that they, you know, use reasonable discretion for once. But I don't think it is ethical if you are a network. I understand if someone's just uploading episodes of, say, Sean Hannity or whatever stupid show has replaced Tucker Carlson and just putting it on YouTube. I understand that, right? You're stealing their intellectual property, whatever, and then maybe you're stealing away money from them or something. Okay, I get that. I get that. I'm fine with that, okay? Copy, copyright, take down that if you want. But I would make the argument something like a presidential debate is in the public interest, right? And that's not just my own personal opinion. That is also the opinion of liberal outlets like NBC, like ABC, like CNN. Because let me tell you something, when they have hosted town halls and debates or something, I've never had a single copyright issue from them. And I've never heard of creators even having that. Why do they do that? Again, think what you will about them as networks. But even they... The kings of liberalism and censorship and whatever you want, you know, you know, CNN censoring stuff, Fox, says Fox News. Well, at least CNN allows creators on both the left and the right to react to things they do of national relevance like presidential town halls and presidential debates. Whereas if you're trying to react to a presidential debate from Fox News, you got to do all this stuff. You got to take it down, blah, 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 afterward or whatever to avoid getting copyright struck, right? And why is this? This is for two reasons. First of all, I think it's because Fox wants to control the narrative, okay? They don't want you to be talking about the presidential debate. They don't want their debate to be seen unless it's on their network. And then number two, it's money, right? It's money. Oh, you want to watch a debate? Go subscribe to Fox Nation, blah, 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 because they're just greedy. They're just greedy is what it is. Because also, I'll point this out. NBC, when they hosted the Republican debate, they uploaded it to YouTube for free. After the fact. After the fact, fine. Right? I get it. Watch it on live TV first. But a couple days later, they uploaded it to their YouTube channel. Now everyone can go and watch it. You, anyone out there, go and try to find me Fox News doing that. They don't. They don't upload their presidential debates. I thought you guys were the free speech network. I thought you guys were like the right wing network. And I thought it was the liberals that were censoring. Again, I hope it doesn't happen to this stream. But I'm just saying... This is what they have a history of doing, Fox News. And people wonder why I'm so critical of them as a conservative, and it's like, aren't you burning professional bridges because you're in conservative commentary and you always attack the biggest fish in conservative media? I don't care. I don't care because I root for the success of Fox News. I think it's an important voice. Even if it's corporate, you need right-wing representation on the airwaves. But, you know, you just can't defend behavior like that. Because at its core, what it is is censorship, you know? They censor people trying to react to their content. And, you know, let's hope that changes. Let's hope they don't do it for this. But if you see this stream and mysteriously disappear, that's going to be the reason why. Is because they don't let people do it. And again, before you say you're just a random YouTuber whining about it, no, no, no. Because again, even liberal outlets don't do that. Because even liberal outlets... When they're doing debates, when they're doing town halls, they see that as being within the public interest, right? So, so they say that we're not going to censor people who react to that or play clips of it or whatever because, you know, it's a town hall. You know, like, that's how it goes, right? You, you, you want people to see it. It's a public event. But not Fox News. Fox News says, you want to watch the presidential debate? Go to Fox Nation and pay the money, you peasant. You want to hear what presidential candidates are saying in terms of an election? Better pay for Fox Nation. How about you make it free because, you know, profit all you want, right? In terms of your shows. I'm not, I'm not attacking that. But a presidential debate belongs in the public interest. And that, that's just the truth. Um, but anyways. Watch, you're not getting a strike on the debate, but you're going to get a strike on Croczilla. Probably. Probably. Croczilla isn't as big as I thought he'd be. Yeah, real. Very real. 
Very real. All right, with that said, folks, if you've got no more Super Chats, let me see if there's any on Streamlabs. I don't think there are. All right, with that said, folks, thank you to everyone who tuned in. Great numbers tonight. I think we peaked at, what, like 600 viewers, close to that. Appreciate the support. Uh, we will not, we probably will not be live tomorrow night because I got to take an exam, but we should see you back most likely Monday for the returns of the streams. Want to get more consistent with the streaming. Still working on the podcast studio. We went live from it the other day. Um, but the biggest problem with that is I've been having to stream off my laptop and the quality's not that great. Thing is, I have a genius big brain crockzilla brain sized special Olympics idea uh, that I'm going to take like a really long HDMI cord. I bought another monitor and stuff and like hook it into my desktop, this computer, the powerful one that actually can like handle all that stuff and then run it into the living room and then we should have like a better quality podcast setup. So that should be coming next week, hopefully. Hopefully everything ships in time and gets here. Uh, so yeah, uh, with that said, folks, remember to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Thank you for the support tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for likely our short video reacting and breaking this down tomorrow. And until next time, Alpha Moves only. Have a very good night. God bless you all. Thanks for the support, and peace. Play the outro.